all ages, welcome in, my friends. We're at it once again. It's the Rob Brown Radio Program right here on The Fan Upstate. Hello, America. What's up, South Carolina? How we doing, everybody? Y'all good? I hope so. I hope everybody's just having the time of their life. You don't owe anything to me, though. You know, I mean... Your undying gratitude and appreciation for the fact that I get up at 3.30 in the morning. But outside of that, you don't owe me anything. I do it uh, for the love of the game. Were you just singing Kim Carnes? Did I did I hear that right? Is that who sings that song? She's Honestly, I know that song inside and out. You gave me $1,000. I couldn't tell you who sings that song. I think song. it's Bill Medley and Kim Carnes. And I owe it all to you. Do you know where it's from, though? Dirty Dancing, baby. <clears throat> okay. All right. Yeah, man. Dirty Dancing, a movie that I realized I had hit a certain age because I loved it growing up. Judge away, I accept it. But then there was a day not too far in the distant past where I watched that movie again as an adult. And I went, her dad should have absolutely put baby in a corner. Yeah, right? she kind of deserved it. By the way, it's Jennifer Warren's not. I was right with Bill Medley, though. It's Bill Medley and Jennifer Warren. Good enough for me. All I'm saying is, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Baby definitively needed to be in a corner, and Swayze needed to be in jail. You creep. Yeah, some sort of restraining order, and also when he walked up, probably the dad, especially that dad in real life, gets up and punches him in the face. Yeah, because because that dad is grown ass man, Swayze. What are you doing? Yeah, that dad is that no nonsense dad that he don't play. Here's the thing, like. He's not even real. Like, I, I, as a kid, you saw the dirty dancing dad is like this authoritarian figure, right? He's just out there to make sure that baby can't live her life. And then you watch it as a reasonable adult and you're like, no, he's not even like a jerk in the movie. He had every right, every right to, to, to like absolutely sue the pants off of that particular club establishment. How many clubs like that did you go to growing up? Because that looked like the kind of place that you might have went to. We were we were a travel family. Okay, all we right. We were a travel family. Right. Okay. Uh, there's no, there's, n he was a good dad. And he gets this rap as like, oh, you know, he's, he's just trying to control his daughter. Yes! That's his daughter, and that's a full-grown man Patrick Swayze is. Dad, the dad was the only character in that movie who didn't suck as a person. And once I watched that movie and, like, shed the immaturity of youth and went... Not only was her dad right the whole time, but the fact that he wasn't kicking ass and taking names, like his only fault is that he didn't put baby in a corner more. All right. According to the internet, Johnny was 25. Baby was only 17. That is She's against only 17. That's also against the law against in almost law. every state. Just about. Yeah. Yeah. That is not. It may not be against law here. I'm not. Also, I'm not sure. Swayze's not 25 in that movie. All right, they, <clears throat> they can say like they might say it in it. There's a, he's 25. Like every character in, pick your generic teen coming of age movie from the 80s was 20 was was 18. Well, remember, like Ralph Macchio was like 30 when yeah. he played Karate Kid. So I mean, yeah. yeah. But he's a senior. No, he's not. No, he's not. I can see that guy's not. I can. It's Patrick Swayze. The man six pack has a six pack. Well, in this case, he was supposedly 25, which is still. It's, it's more realistic. Yeah, yeah. But it's not realistic. Let's just call it what it is. You have reached maturity when you watch Dirty Dancing and it clicks to you that the dad was the only good guy in the movie. The only one. Baby was an idiot. Baby's mom was an idiot. Swayze was an idiot. All right. Now, if Swayze just hangs out with all the dancing degenerates in their little late night uh, orgy club or whatever it was, no problem. 
That's a that's a very 25 year old thing to do. I'm great with that. As a former frat bro, I'm totally fine. You get a bunch of the youths. They all go do their thrusting and grinding in a room together late at night away from the guest. That's perfectly valid. Perfectly fine. I used to want to work on a cruise ship because I heard the stories of staff parties on cruise ships. I was all in. That's totally understandable. I get that. But the minute that the 25-year-old dance instructor from the all-inclusive re resort starts bringing the 17-year-old girl to some secluded less uh, cabin for private lesson. No, you creep. All right? The only thing the dad did wrong was not kick more ass in that movie. Right? And I get it. He couldn't have beat up Swayze. Swayze was Swayze, man. That's Dalton from Roadhouse. It, it, that 65-year-old that, that dad isn't beating up Swayze. But he... Sh my guy could own that club with the lawsuit that he could have brought down on them. By the way, Jennifer Grey was actually 26, playing 17. Yeah, well, if we're going to pretend Swayze is 25, then Jennifer Grey was 17. We're, we're either kayfabe or we're not. If Swayze's 35 and she's 25, I don't know what you have in common, but like, okay, that's two functioning adults making adult decisions. I'm good with that. That girl's 17. She's in a room with her dad, for God's sake. How is, how, do, okay. When this movie came out, those of you of a certain age that were maybe in your, in your, in your, those years what? when that movie dropped. Why, why are you looking at me? Yeah, I was after your, after your dirty dancing era. For those of you that were in that little age bracket, did y'all watch this movie and be like, oh, that's that's so hot. That's that's so romantic. Cause it's not, it's the, weird. The girls did for sure. That, that was a that was a definitely a big deal. By the way, I was out in 1987. So I had, you know, I was in college in 1987. I was in diapers in 19. Okay, I wasn't. I was two, but you get the point. Okay, while I'm at it, while I'm at it. Since we're here, since I've already ruined the opening to this show, let's keep going. King Triton from The Little Mermaid, also a good dad and also correct, all right? Homegirl, you are 15 years old. You have never left the grotto, and you think you're just fin overhead in love with some cat that you, you know what you are? You're not a hopeless romantic Ariel. You're a stalker at the best you're a stalker. Uh, and, and all King Triton did was go, maybe don't run away and give up your entire life for a man that you saw for 26 seconds from an entirely different part of the world. You got nothing in common with this guy. You don't speak the same language. You don't, you don't walk on land. He lives on land. You live in the water. No, maybe don't go run away and throw away your life heir to the kingdom of the seven seas. I don't get why it is that we let that story be passed off as one of the goats of all time. All right. All right. So your transformation into old is now complete. Dude, this is not an old comment. Yeah, well, the rants this that you're, not, yeah, because because I think a lot of people don't put this kind of thought into it. You know it. who else maybe was they, wrong? Maybe they should. You know who else was wrong? The dad from Footloose. No, shut up, idiot. If people want to dance, let them dance, all right? I'm not the guy who goes around and goes, oh, you can't in your music, it sucks. I just got to stop for me. Have your have your fun. I don't care. It's a, whatever. But if you are going to hit me with, it's an old man philosophy that the king would look at his 15-year-old daughter and go, maybe don't throw away your life as the heir to everything under the sea, under the sea, for a man that you saw on a boat from a thousand yards away, King Triton was right, the dad from Dirty Dancing was right, and they deserve some damn respect. All right. By the way, I didn't say that I disagreed with you. It's no, just of course you don't, because you're a mature, responsible uh, adult most of the time. I don't know about mature. Most but of the time. I'm at least old. So so there's that. Um wow. I don't know what's going on. I had none of this planned. 
Yeah, because I, I none of this played. I, I gotta I gotta admit, I remember more about Little Mermaid than I actually do about Dirty Dancing, even though I did see it. Yeah. Dude, she quite literally, quite literally is sneaking away to go to private dance instruction with a 25-year-old member of the camp dance team and then comes to dad and is like, yo, I need you to float me a few hundred dollars. I can't tell you why, but don't worry. It's definitely not connected to the 25-year-old man that I'm very clearly getting physical with while I'm on a family vacation. Definitely not connected. And lied about it so that we're all on the same page. Baby's dad was the only good guy in that story. King Triton and Sebastian the Crab, the only good guys in that story. Flounder should be excommunicated from the kingdom of King Triton. At least you didn't say eaten. I was, I was waiting for you to say Flounder. Should be, yeah, okay. as they say All in right. the movie. All right. Sebastian and Triton, the only good Flounder guys. Flounder is now sushi. Also... Tim just hit me with is Rob a hater because he doesn't have moves like Johnny Tim. Let me tell you something, my guy, Rob Brown in his younger and more formidable days. Like when I was 25 had the moves like Jagger, he got the moves like Jagger. I was for a very long time. I hope my mom's not awake yet undefeated at wedding receptions. Wedding receptions, bang. Inv Don't put me in your wedding party. I'm going to embarrass you. Just let me be there. I'm the life of the party. I promise you, back in the day. I don't know if I still do. I think I do. Well, I let's, let's not go the there because you're – Oh, you just talking about dancing. I'm saying dance. Okay, okay. All right, Which, all right, because I thought that was like like, yeah, something else. All right. You know, you know. Okay, okay, because when you said undefeated, that's where I went. Because yeah, that's, that's where I thought Listen, you were. We're all adults here. Rob Brown used to be 25 and had uh, the moves, my guy. And, and, and I'm talking versatility, baby. Waltz, Foxtrot, swing, tango. Okay, booty, we're still we're still whatever talking. Whatever you want. Okay, all right, all right. So you see that part. And, okay. and there's a reason. That dancing is sexy is all I'm saying. It's all I'm saying. There's a reason dancing is sexy. Well, everyone knows what dancing leads to. Point here is, I ain't jealous. I ain't jealous. What I'm saying is, even at 25, Rob Brown, yeah, absolutely knew without a doubt. If she can't go buy me a beer, I'm out. That was the test for your boy for many years. If I went to a bar, pretty young lady got into a conversation, I'd be like, hey, if I give you 10 bucks, will you go get us a couple of beers? And if the answer was no, then my answer was also no. Johnny, do better. Do better. Baby's dad, you have my respect. You earned it. Okay? You deserved better than you got. You weren't the villain of that story. What the hell are we talking about on the show? Today? I, I don't know. You started singing. She's only 17. And I had to have a discussion with my daughter who said, that is gross. And because I'm just jamming to it. Cause it was, it was killer back in the day. And she's like, that's, I can't, how old is this guy? I was like, he was 15 Do when you know he, how many he was 15 creepy, when he wrote the song. So, so many creepy 80 songs there is there is about chicks that are like 16 17 years old so what was going on with again all back in the 80s kip winger said he wrote the song when he was 15 he was playing in bars when he was 14 so um i mean that can be checked out so no, seriously yeah. your honor i wrote it when i was 15 yeah I'd, trust me i believe him because you know rock stars never lie oh man so many what were y'all doing back in the 80s bro there's no difference now now it's just more out in the open. There's no innuendo. There's no nothing like it was in the eighties. Now it's just now it's just like yeah, let's 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 bring up the who whatever the number one rap song is right now. And I'm sure that it's very vocal okay, about. Okay, let me things. phrase that. If there's a song that's like yo unskinny bop bop bop, we all know what it means. We know what we're talking about here. It's a different thing when you go. She's only seventeen. If you're saying I did, she's I only didn't know what unskinny bop meant when it came out. I just I come didn't. on. I, I seriously did not. I, I didn't didn't get it. I believe most other lyrics. I got the she's only 17. That song I did. I thought it was stupid. It's I like, what in the world is this talking about? The great Jared e. Brown would say, Bless your heart. Bless your heart. Uh, okay. Well, whatever. It was Teeny Brown, bless your heart. It was 1987. I was, I don't know, 18. So or was it 17? I, I don't know. Lester said, this is the best segment of the Upstate Pulse ever. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we got a lot to get to today, ladies and gentlemen. NBA play-in games taking place last night as 
predicted the Heat cover, but the 76ers moving on. However, the Heat still not eliminated. They got a game against Chicago on Friday. However, bad news, Jimmy Buckets might be done for the season with a busted MCL, in which case the Heat are, uh, what's the word I'm looking for here? Screwed. We also, of course, had the Atlanta Hawks getting bounced, getting sent home last night. We're going to talk about the ramifications of that game as well as the play-in game on the West. Sacramento, New Orleans, no Zion Williamson out with a busted-up hamstring. Do the Pellies have a shot? We'll talk some basketball. A huge development out of the NCAA yesterday. We'll get into that and more. It's all coming up on the Rob Brown Show in the Fan Upstate. Nice, Brian. That's going to be a blast, dude. I love Talladega. I've been to Talladega three times. Three times. And it's a shame I haven't been back since I moved here. Uh, I love Talladega. Well, you have 37 jobs. Sometimes it's hard to squeeze things in. Four hours from here. Four and a half. I've driven further for less. And now Greenville is home to the most epic comic and game store around. Borderlands Comics and Games. Reimagined. Bigger and better than before. The state's premier hobby shop has been bringing the best in comics, manga, and gaming to the region for three decades. Come see us at our amazing location at 410 South Pleasantburg. Live the Borderlands experience for yourself. We've gone to a whole new level. Find us on Facebook and Instagram. Proud sponsors of the Upstate Pulse. Borderlands Comics and Games. Read, build, play. Look around. You can buy cars like these on Auto Trader, like that car riding right your tail. Or if you're tailgating right now, all those cars doubling as kitchens and living rooms are on Auto Trader too. Are you working out and listening to this ad at the same time? Well, multitasking pro, cars like the ones in the gym parking lot are for sale on Auto Trader. New cars, used cars, electric cars, maybe even flying cars. Okay, no flying cars, but as soon as they get invented, and I owe it all to you. Ba, 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 ba. Hey, baby. Wow, I can't believe you did this to yourself. So that song is going to be in your head. All old. damn day. So we take each other's hand because we seem to understand the urgency. Ba 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 Just remember, you're the one thing I can't get enough of. So I'll tell you something. This could be love because... Absolutely nailing it over here. That's what I was thinking. So, uh, a big time news out of the NCAA yesterday. There are some NCAA meetings going on right now that conclude today. And if this legislation is passed, it will have to be passed formally and officially on Monday. Though the assumption is that all of these things are a formality. And that all of these things are going to officially pass the remaining board hurdles in front of them by the NCAA's executive board, et cetera, et cetera. But the new rule says that all undergraduate athletes may now transfer and play immediately if they meet specific academic requirements and they now may transfer as often as they wish, which means. 
We could theoretically see a student play at four schools in four years, provided they are ticking all the boxes of academic eligibility that are required of them. The legislation will not limit the number of times an athletes can transfer, and there are only two transfer windows still in play. However, athletes may not transfer mid-year and play for a second school within the same season. Now, the new rule is, according to those reporting on it, including Heather Dinich, the new rule is, quote, tied to academic progress. Some in college athletics have expressed concern about the long-term implications for graduation rates. Poof. Dan Lanning, head coach at Oregon, said in a recent interview, quote, one of the questions we have to ask <laughs> ourselves is, at what point does the degree still matter? I think it's going to make it harder and harder if guys become multi-year transfer guys for them to actually have a college degree. If you graduate, there's a lot of times it makes sense. Change schools as many times as you want if you graduate. But on the same note, if somebody's changing schools three times, I'm wondering what their progress towards a degree really looks like. I think that's something everyone should probably have some awareness of, end quote. So what he's saying is stop calling them scholar athletes, they're employees. That's no. that's what he's saying. That's how it's taken, for sure. I think what he's saying is, you know, we've never really cared about graduation rates, but now that it's an argument against the portal, I super duper care about graduation rates. They don't. They don't. That's why Randy Shannons get fired all the time. That's why guys get canned when they have 90 plus percent graduation rates, but they go six and six. Because we pretend that we care. It's a nice little bragging point when your football team has a 75, 80, 85 percent graduation rate. Sure. When did Randy Shannon coach? Miami. I know when. Oh God, years ago. Right. It's just the best example I have okay, that's stuck that stuck in my brain. That was that was before all this stuff, though. I don't disagree. But my point here is I've never did, let me ask you this question. If I was to go to Oregon right now. Any school, any any sport on the school's campus, how many graduation rate banners do you think they have hung up there? Zero, zero, nine, so none. Why, so why are they going to school then, Rob? Why are they going if they're, to school? If they're not graduating, why are they going to college? Hey, listen, I am good with saying graduation rates are important, but I've been saying that the whole time. It's never been a factor until now. So if they're not going there to go to school. We ain't come here to play school. They're going there to go to work. They're so going there to play ball and go to school. Which is, they're going there to go to work. Cause dude, I seriously, I, I mean, if you transfer that many times, how there are probably some that will actually go to class and, and, and get good grades and, and things. And then there are some that the grades will be done for them. I just, you know. So what's new? So what's different about 10 years ago, 15 years ago, 20 years ago? Nada. Nothing's different. That is exactly the same as it's been. There is only the difference that kids can go to a different school, and that's where the trigger comes in. Yeah, this just, is not uh, any different call than them, it's been. Just call them employees. That's what they are. Quit what, worrying about. But why weren't they that 10 years ago? They're not, they're not. They were for me. Um, they're not there for school. They're there to use school to get them to the next level. That's First fine. Off. And now they're there to get paid while they're at school, which makes them for sure an upfront employee, not, uh, uh, Hey, how you doing? Shake my hand. Take this $500 or as, these keys to that Corvette. As has been said a thousand times in a thousand I'm times. Talking to you, again. Mikey, you know who you are. You, there's no way you paid for that Corvette. A lot of Dodge Chargers on the campus of Tuscaloosa, Alabama. So back in the day, Division Three, no way. As yeah. has been said time and 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 time again, do you know what percentage of college football players make it to the next level? Don't worry, I do. The answer is less than 2%. Percent on average, and this is obviously going to be skewed towards the big schools. But if I go across NCAA football teams from the very tippy top to the very, very bottom, on average, there is less than one player per roster that will go to the NFL. Less than one per roster. Oh, no, I'm not going to the NFL, but I made $5 million while I was in college. Lonzo, why, why do I need to go to the I NFL? I really wish you would use realistic numbers. Dude, 
We've had this conversation before. Yeah. I can I can go back and find the numbers again. No, no, no. You, I'm not. No, 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 no. Realistic numbers. I'm not talking about Caleb Williams. I'm not talking about the the Jaden Daniels. All right. I'm talking we, about we had this fight left guard. And, and and I and I showed you a bunch of players. You know what? No, you gave me Caitlin <laughs> Clark and Caleb Williams. By the and way, Jaden Daniels. But I did. Jimmy Clemson's left guard. I didn't give you any of those. I gave you the stuff from last year. Um, and the other thing is, I'm not talking about that guard. I'm. I mean, why am I? Why? Why are you specifically talking about that guard? I'm talking about the stars. I'm talking about those guys. And and uh, the guard's probably doing pretty well in Clemson. Probably driving something nice. I mean, good for him. Maybe. That's that's not the. You just you get so angry about this stuff. I do. And let me tell you and, what. And just be you, just over the employee night. thing. I, and, I realized, and because yeah. I realized it last night. I realized it last night. It does two things. Number one, let's say you are talking about the stars and the stars alone. I'm good with that. Let's say that you are. What you are doing is also making it harder on 98.4% of football players. I, I, I'm doing that? Yes. Me. I, yes. I'm doing, I have that kind of power. Yes. Because I don't think that I do. So Clemson's left guard, who ain't going pro. Oh, he's he's an employee. He's just in it for the money. By the way, you don't know that for sure. No, the left, the left guard. Right, you, you don't right, even know who he is. You're right, okay. you're right. You're right. You're right. Right. Furman's left guard. Let's go. Okay. All Rawford's right. Furman's left guard. Uh, okay. Because because Clemson has FCW had some left guard. linemen make it to the big show. So UAB's left guard. Pick a left guard that's not at a power five university. And hell, for the record, pick probably ninety percent of left guards that are at power five universities. Not going to the show. One point six percent. I have. I, I feel I like you're coming at me as someone who played left guard in college, and and so so it's just like this. You why are you making it personal? Fine, right guards. That's better. Right guards. They don't really do anything. I went so. left guard because that's the blind side guard. They're more. Yeah, but there's a lot of pulling involved and, and things like that. I was a good pulling guard. The left guard is more fun than right guard. So the point here, I came to this realization last. Unless night. you need pit. You know, no, we don't yeah, need that. No, so, tell me. yeah, you know, you might. You're worked up off a lot. I was, I've, I've thought about this a lot. Why this bothers me as much as it does, and I'll tell you why. Because I kind of take it personally. I realized that last night. I, can, I, I take it personally on behalf of the 98.4 percent of student athletes who will never play it professionally. You are the voice of the voiceless. I am a man of the people. Oh my things. Wait. Man of the people. He's a man of the people. Uh, 1.6%. And whenever we have these conversations, it always, it, it circles back around to Caleb Williams and, and Jaden Daniels and JJ McCarthy and Bo Nix and Marvin Harrison Jr. And, and Malik neighbors and like the stars. They're guys that are going to get drafted in this NFL draft. Who, who weren't making a million dollars a year. They're probably ma like maybe ma maybe a hundred thousand dollars a year. But it comes back to me to the standpoint of you don't own them. They're individual people. I don't know if you know this, but if I go to school A and I am there for a year, and I decide after a year, this isn't a good fit for me. As a student, as a regular college dude, if I go to a school, let's say, I don't know, let's make up an example of a dude that's not me. If I went to a school because I wanted to be a high school teacher and basketball coach, and I get there, and the other guy, definitely not me, and I get there, and I'm there for a year, and I'm going through my secondary. This guy, obviously, definitely not me, going through their secondary education program, and they get assigned a practicum, which is where they go, hey, we're going to send you into that school, and you're going to go shadow a teacher, and you're going to spend a semester in that class as their teaching assistant, and your grade is going to be dictated to us by the teacher. Again, definitely not me. And you do that for a year. And let's say that while you're there, Every teacher in that school goes, you don't want to do this. It's not worth it. 
It used to be worth it. It's not worth it. And then one day, as you're walking down the hallway, a student that you gave an F to because he didn't do his group project, I don't know, theoretically, throws a pencil box at your head, runs away, and does not get disciplined for it because they have a big basketball game the next week. Let's say, hypothetically, these things happen, and you go, you know what? Bleep this, I'm out. I hate this. You're right. It's not worth it. Thank you, coach. Uh, again, this hypothetical person says all this, and you decide, this is not what I want to do. I thought it was, but it ain't for me. I don't have the patience. I will end up punching a teenager in the face if I take this job. I'm out. Do you know what I'm allowed to do as a student? I'm allowed to go, thanks, but I'm going to that school over there where I've been accepted because they have a different major. Say, theoretically, journalism that I'm interested in doing, so I'm going to go do that, and I just sign and say goodbye and I transfer my credits to that school and now I go there now am I a bad guy am well, I a bad person throwing things in school sounds normal to me I don't I don't get yeah, why you're upset for me it was a student at the teacher not the teacher at the student yeah well I think I, I'm not saying that kind of stuff didn't happen yet. by the way top Colorado commit uh, from last year Jordan Seaton received a seven-figure NIL deal he was an offensive lineman good for him a boy get the bag young man Get that bag. Just saying, quit acting like linemen don't get paid because they do. Nah, I'm not saying linemen don't get paid. I'm saying stop pretending like the top 500 players are the bottom 5,000 because they're not. The point here is you don't own these players. They sign a contract with you to play for a season. You provide them with a reason to stay or a reason to go. Just like every other student in a college, I can elect to stay or I can elect to go. They have the same rights, and I do not understand other than I don't like it. It makes it hard to roster bill. Well, then be better. Make kids want to stay. It's not that hard. We'll talk more about it on the flip side. Rob Alonzo and you, the Rob Brown Show, carries on in it. The Fan Up State. Oh, man. It's hockey season, baby. By the way, Tracy, I would say a good portion of people are like you. Rob's the only guy I know like this. But, I mean, that doesn't mean that there aren't more. Have your schools... Give them a reason to stay. Dude, dude, don't 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 stand like that. You just look like big time uh, squad member from. Not their responsibility to make you happy. You're just so angry. The jam cam. So my home is also my office, and before I can focus, every room's got to be clean. That means tidying up and spraying my Febreze air mist. Ooh, that's fresh. 
Febreze air mist scents are all high quality. They fight any weird funk and they give my air an instant boost of freshness. So not only does my home smell good, I feel good like too. After I Febreze, it's time to start my day. As a roofer, spring means the start of my busy season, which means I've got to get organized with help from Beacon. I can save time with Beacon Pro Plus and 24-7 access to live pricing, delivery tracking, order history, and more. Plus, this spring, I can earn $1,000 and the chance to win a $25,000 backyard renovation just by buying my certain teen shingles online with Beacon. No purchase necessary. Now, that's what I call a spring cleanup. Visit BECN.com for official rules and to start earning entries. You're in hot water, Mister. You know, there's still time for you to go back to school and and become an NIL agent. You could do that. Probably make a lot of money. Being the advocate that you are, your passion, you can you can make that that second string lineman some cash. I don't have the, I don't have the viciousness to be a sports agent. Anymore. I don't have the conflict uh, control. Tracy, if somebody came to you today and said, I want you to come do the exact same job and I'm going to give you a $50,000 a year raise, would you say no out of loyalty to the job? That's a genuine question. If the answer is yes, good for you, but. He doesn't believe you, going. even though there's someone across from him who's been in the same place for 24 years. But yeah. I figured it out during the break. I figured it out. I figured out why this why this got me tapping the pen on the desk out of I don't know frustration. Which is very annoying, by the agitation. Way. Whatever. The, I figured out what it now, is. You know, someone's driving along, go. What is that noise? I don't. I, what is that? I only do it when the music's rolling. See? Yeah, you still do. Hear it now? Yeah, okay. I figured out what it is. Uh, it is the sense of entitlement from fans that's what it is that's what it is it's the sense of entitlement because every time that i see people like they were yesterday up in arms about this it is always i want i want this is how i want it to be i want this i want that hasn't college sports though encouraged the we mentality this is this is our school this is our team. And so when you feel like it's your school and your team, you feel invested and you also feel betrayed when someone leaves your team. Correct. And just like everything else, you're invested. So you'll be invested. You don't leave. You don't take off the colors. But how you feel about a thing does not obligate somebody else to feel the same way about the thing. And if you want a bunch of kids who go, I bleed orange and purple, or I bleed garnet and black, then go recruit those kids. It's the sense of entitlement. It's 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 this sense of I feel this way about this thing, therefore you should as well. I, I feel this strength. way, and so do eighty thousand other people and in the that stands with me. Still doesn't obligate anybody else to feel the same way. Like, great, I am glad that that sense of tribalism is is strong. More, the majority of the people in that stadium, if they were polled, will be more on the side that's opposite of you. And yet. There are probably like, doesn't matter. like five people there who might believe you, and you probably know all of them. Okay. If I walk into any given room, Lonzo, and 95% of the people in that room all hold the same religious belief, am I obligated to go, you guys are right, and I should feel that way? If I walk into a room and 95% of the people feel the same political belief, am I obligated to agree with the 95% because they all feel the same way yeah, and it's a big group of people? never work. They do work. They, they don't. I don't care if you have nine or 900 or 9,000 or 900,000 people together. You feeling the way about the thing does not mean that I need to feel the way about the thing. That's America, baby. And you being the contrarian, you're never going to think the way that the majority of the people think. It doesn't matter if I'm doing out of contrarianism or the most genuine internally held belief of all time. It's It doesn't matter. 
that's 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 Let, not- let's put all the radio stuff aside and whatever is a bit and what isn't a bit genuinely you are the only person i've ever heard espouse the things that you are about nil well uh again doesn't matter because if 99.9 percent of americans feel x is good that does not obligate the 0.1% to agree with it. Could you could you be wrong in your opinion? In this case, no. No. That's what I figured. The That's belief right. that an athlete has the right to utilize th- what they have built through hard work and practice and dedication to profit off of it away from the team, that is an American right. That we have, you know what? You also have a right to complain about it and be upset about your team not being able to. Um, you do find continuity because people don't stay, and now if they're allowed to leave whenever they want, whenever this is passed, um, and the midseason thing will happen eventually, so that you can recruit someone midseason and bring them onto your team because you have a need. That's going to happen. Everything else they've wanted to happen has fell fell into place. That will happen too. Who's they? And and Who's and they? that would be of. The uh, the uh, Illuminati. Who's that? The Illuminati. I no, just, it's not I just, the Illuminati. I just said that. This it's is the skull so, and crossbones. So this to me is th- there's <clears throat> there's two things right in that statement that I want to address. The first is the slippery slope fallacy. Well, all this has happened, therefore the real bad thing's going to happen. Maybe, but we're not there. We're dealing with what we're. Just to say your your philosophy in life, but anyway, correct. <laughs> Be correct. And it's a logical standpoint that you should stand on. I'm not going to worry about or slide down two years down the slope. road. The second thing is, no, you are correct. It drives me up a wall when someone says a thing and they go, they, then tell me who they is. Because if you can't tell me who they is, then you don't have a foundation for what you're saying. Do you have, ne- have you never said when or thought when you're thinking about your favorite team, we, you've never thought that? Yes, but there's a defined we. We, we, this defined group of people, they is not a defined group of people. It's dark, shadowy figures in the distance. You got to tell me who they are. Otherwise, I got no reason to believe there's not actually anybody outside. There's no reason to believe. Well, it's kind of dark, so it would be shadowy out. So That actually. there are nefarious forces at play unless you can point them out. Now, all of that aside, let's go back to where this this whole thing started. The... Belief that 99% of people think X is good. That's fine. Good. Good on you. Good on you for having a super majority. Or, or bad. What it does not do is create a world in which you are allowed to dictate the behavior of others. You don't. You don't get to do that. Now, if the dictation is don't hurt somebody else, then yes, you have a point. That's why we have rules on the books where the laws say you can't injure other people or impact their lives directly. You, that's a law. We're good with that. I can't go, I think murder's okay, stabby, stabby, stabby. You can't do that because you're impacting other people. But a player That, going, that was an extreme example that made me uncomfortable. Now you know me. Uh, the... Reality here is because I think, because we think, because a billion people think that this is how one person should do a thing does not mean in this country we can compel them to do it. If you want kids who if you cut them open, they bleed orange and purple or they bleed garnet and black or they bleed blue and orange or maize and blue or scarlet and gray or whatever then go recruit kids like that. They're out there for sure. There's lifelong Buckeyes out there who wanted nothing more as a kid than to be the next great player at the Ohio State University. Recruit that kid. Get that kid to come represent your school. He's going to give it his all. He just wanted to be a Buckeye from time immemorial. Just wants to be a Buckeye. Recruit that kid. But, That kid going lifelong, I bleed scarlet and gray, does not compel a kid from California to leave the sunny beaches of Los Angeles, fly to Columbus, spend a year there, and go, I hate this. I don't want to be here anymore. It's pretty cold. So if the money's exactly, yeah. Again, look, 
We've talked about this. I like to use me as an example because I'm a big headed egomaniac and kind of a jerk. I'm the example. I have this job. Am I loyal to the station? You're damn right I am. I am at local sports all the time because I want to make sure we are invested. I am invested in the community. I am loyal to a fault to this station. But if somebody calls me tomorrow and goes, RB3, we want to hand you a quarter milli to come here and host the radio show, I got to go. And I, I told the boss when I got here, I've said this on the air. If I leave this place, it's because somebody made me an offer I can't refuse. And when I tell you what that offer is, you're going to shake my hand and go, congratulations. What an opportunity. We wish you the best of luck. Come back and visit. You, as you pointed out during the break, have been here a very long time. And it is your choice to do that. It is your choice to stay in this position. And I respect the bleep out of that. I could absolutely go to you and go, Lonzo, I think you could be making a billion dollars doing this exact same thing somewhere else. But your decision to stay here is your decision to stay here. And I respect it. Without a doubt. I don't understand why it is that, well, you know, it makes it harder for me to invest in my school. Why? Why? Every year you watch the team, the team is different than, well, I want to watch these kids grow. I don't know what to tell you. You don't do that. If you would call the exterminator and a new bug guy shows up and not your old bug guy, do you call the old bug guy and go, yes, sell out. Yes, sell out. You thin-skinned loser, you left my favorite bug company to go to a new bug company for new money. You have no loyalty. No, you don't do that. You don't do that to your barber. It's, or your it's a major your mechanic. minority of fans that go after kids when they leave. I mean, unfortunately, they're very vocal, but but it's very much a minority. Um, I don't think that stadium that we were talking about earlier – with 90,000 fans in it. If you go, this kid left, left, are you going to say something bad to him? I don't think a high percentage of people would do that. It is not the attacking of the kids. It is the, it is the, the, the enormous pushback against the system established that allows these kids to make choices about their own life, as opposed to have those choices made for them. That I don't understand. That That's what I push back against. Texture says, Rob is too butthurt about this topic. You can equally say the student athletes are entitled. The mentality is nowadays, if I don't make enough money or playing time, I'll leave. Kids are soft. They need to be tough and work hard and earn their playing time. Uh, okay. Let's break that down, shall we? We got th three and a half minutes left. I got all the time I need. Is Rob Butt heard about this topic? No, nah, not really. Because I got my way. Well, you're very loud and and, and angry. This so. radio is early morning. So, I gotta so, keep us so. awake. No, you're the only one that loud in this building. But second off, you can equally say the student athletes are entitled and quote. No, 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 no. What I would say is they finally get a piece of a pie. It's not all floating up to the suits in the top ivory towers anymore. Is that entitlement? See, that's the kind of language that people that are in charge utilize to make sure they get all the pie. They get the pie, and when you go, I like a slice of pie, then they go, oh, you're entitled. You're entitled. Y yes, it's I'm the one doing it. Again, when's the last time you ever tuned in to watch those TV networks board meetings? You've never done it. You tune in every Saturday to watch what? Football. And who plays the football? The football players. They're the ones who do the thing that we give the money for. And they're going, hey, we'd like maybe the opportunity to have a, 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 a piece of that action, boss, as the great Marshawn Lynch would say. That's not entitlement. That's justified. Entirely justified. Uh, it goes on to say, the mentality is nowadays, if I don't make enough money or playing time, I'll leave. How many times have I said, do a better job at building roster out of kids who want to be there? Do a better. Yes, that's how it works. And it's not new. 
dudes and dudettes. It's not new. And again, it is the only spot I am aware of outside of parents to their own children where if a guy goes, I've got a better opportunity elsewhere, I'm going to take it. We go, boo, the audacity. How dare you? How dare you decide for your own betterment you're going to take a better opportunity? How awful of you. What a terrible decision. Yeah, we don't do that. Again, if you go to your local barbershop and you find out that the guy's been cutting your hair for five years left to take a better opportunity somewhere else, do you call that guy and go, you suck, bro. I trusted you. I was invested in this barbershop. No, you've never done that. So why is it that this is, oh, these kids need to learn a lesson. Uh, do they? Do they? And do and what expense do they need to learn it at? I I I, I don't agree with that. Uh, kids are soft. They need to be taught uh, taught tough. They need to be tough, work hard, and earn their playing time. Oh, like okay, I I I see that you are renting apartment uh, in the empire of idealism, over which Lonzo remains the emperor. N no. No, when I started in this business, I started as a weekend board op. And then I went to producer of a morning show that did I earn all that? You're damn right. I did. And at any given point, had I gotten a call from another station that said, Hey, Robbie B, why don't you come on over to city X? We're going to go ahead and give you your own show. I'd have been G-O-N gone. I had immense loyalty to my first radio station. They allowed to keep. They allowed me to keep my job when my dad died. They allowed me to finish school while I was working. Hell, there was a point in time for one semester where I was hosting the morning show over a computer at 6 a.m. in the parking lot of the media relations school at the University of West Florida because it was the only way I could finish school and do my job. And the boss said, one semester, you got it. So I would drive every morning at 3 a.m. to be in the parking lot at UWF at 5, to be on the air at 6. I would host from the front seat of my car from 6 to 10 to then go into my 10 o'clock class. And my boss let me do that. And I was immensely loyal. Until the day I got a spot that I had to take a job that was a better job and a higher paying job to make my life better. Am I a bad guy? Am I, am I disloyal? Did I, did I not work hard enough? Did I not show character by sticking it out? All I know is I've never worked with anyone who talks about leaving more than you do. And yet here I am going on five years at this place. You know why? Because they, like your football team should try to do, have earned my loyalty. They have earned my loyalty. I don't want to leave. And the only spot I would leave for is if someone made me an offer that when I came in the next day and said, Lonzo, these people want to pay me this much. He'd be like, wow. Well, you've kind of said that you would do that for the entire time you've been here. So I wouldn't be surprised. It's not surprised. It's that you would not go. I can't believe how disloyal you're being. I can't believe you're not helping us roster build here anymore. No, I would be like, yeah, I'm starting a new job. Because that's how I've survived here for 24 years. Because people come and they go and then you, you start a new job. And it's like like starting over again. Texas said, my problem with it all is do they care about their education? Because if they get hurt, what are they going to fall back on? 1.6% go to the NFL. That means, and I'm real bad at math. I'm dumb. That's why all my jobs are words jobs. 98.4% of college students do not play professional ball. As long as they all went to financial classes, what they're going to fall back on is all the money they made in NIL and they can live, you know, comfortably the rest of their lives. Uh, I'm sorry, 1.2% of those people or whatever. 1.4%. Okay, my bad. Uh, no, sorry, 1.6%, 98.4% that don't go pro. Who, yes, get that bag while you can. Hey, speaking of getting the bag, Caitlin Clark's very rich. We're going to talk about that coming up in the next hour of the show. We got your water cooler cheat sheet, top three sports stories you need to know coming up next. We got Rashad Beard of the Panther Nation podcast at 840. It's Thursday. You know what that means? Fight Club with the great Lonzo coming up at 920. And before all of that, ladies and gentlemen, sit back. Take your socks off so that he doesn't blow them off. Lonzo does your sports flash now.
consolation. Not only do the Miami Heat face elimination and play in game number two, but they may have to do it without superstar Jimmy Butler. The Heat fell to Philadelphia last night, 105 to 104, moving the 76ers to the seventh seed in the playoffs and setting Miami up for an elimination game. Jimmy Butler stayed in the game despite an injury at the end of the first quarter. Well, Butler is feared to have an MCL injury and will have an MRI today. Miami faced Chicago Friday night. The Atlanta Hawks season came to its conclusion last night with a loss to the Chicago Bulls, 131 to 116. Clint Capella, Trey Young, Bogdan Bogdanovich, and Deontay Murray combined for 95, while the rest of the team was responsible for 21 total. Kobe White notched 42 for the Bulls. Tune in this afternoon from 3 to 7 p.m. for a brand new local show, Wire to Wire. Cole Bryson and Diesel get you up to date on the latest local and national sports news. Great guests, great debate, all Wire to Wire. Oh, man, did he stop saying Jam Cam? I hope that's not my fault. It probably is. I'm so influential. I feel bad about that. I'll keep my fingers crossed. Maybe he'll say it again, and then I'll know I, I didn't ruin it. Because apparently I influence all things. That's what I do. Visiting us online at tra.com or call 800-575-6986. That's 800-575-6986. Tax Relief Advocates. Real solutions for real people. If you like trivia, pizza, and beer, you're going to love Tuesday nights at the Mellow Mushroom Pizza Bakers. That's right. Mellow has one of the best distributed business West End. Has live hosted team trivia every Tuesday night starting at 7. Compete for Mellow Cash in our fun and funky digs. While enjoying specials on amazing... I don't know. The average host on this station, I think, makes it about seven or eight years, so we should be pretty good. <laughs> the sample size is pretty small, though. So, I mean, you know. NASA confirmed that a piece of the International Space Station equipment that fell off hit a house in Florida while people were inside. They all right? Betty, the house done got hit by a satellite again. A 1.6 pound piece of hardware that was used at one time with the ISS hit a home in Naples last month. My my uh, uncle lives there, uh, cousin. The agency did not release the address of the home. According to NASA, the chunk of metal was a stanchion. That's a part of some equipment used to mount batteries connected to the ISS when operational equipment weighs around 5,800 pounds. The majority of the equipment... This uh, being referred to as space junk burned up in the upper atmosphere. Space junk is a blanket term used to blah, 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 blah. NASA says there's something to the order of 6,000 tons of space junk in low Earth orbit above our planet right now. or reduce what you owe to the IRS. There is zero risk to you. If we can't reduce your tax debt, then you pay nothing. Maybe they should use like um, a Star Wars defense system to practice and just like blow all that stuff to pieces. Wonder what that sounded like. I mean, you're sitting in your living room like watching basketball or something and you hear a sound. And then next thing you know, something hits your house. Do you automatically think that was a meteorite or something? I assume something fell out of my tree.
Anytime I hear a boom or I hear, I always think, here we go. And then you wait. It's like, okay, is it a tree or is it red dawn about to happen? It's it's, it's 50 50 in my head. Because you should always be prepared. QC in the first break. Here we go with our number two of the Rob Brown Radio Program. Right here on the Fan Upstate. Great to have you, ladies and gentlemen. The great one, Lonzo. I am Rob Brown. Let's rock and roll, shall we? Jordan from GE text the show said, Rob, Rob probably thinks this is a Lonzo burner account. Don't worry, it's not. No, I didn't think that. As Lonzo's pointed out, I'm in the minority on this. I know that I am. I, and this is true, just don't care. I can confirm he doesn't appear to care. Not in, the, not even a little bit. Not even a little bit. Texas said no one is buying barber or bug guy gear, paying for streaming services to watch them, and the players have no investment, only opportunity, scholarships, plus every medical and dietary benefit. Bug guys and barbers are not a good illustration. Um, if you think players have no investment, you didn't play football at any level. They also Done. they also get free food. You forgot that part. He said dietary. Oh, did he? Okay. Yeah, he said he My said bad. they have uh, they have uh, That's, dietary is a big word for me, especially lately. If you think football players have no investment, my guy, you didn't play ball. Because I promise you, anybody who's done August two a days, they invested. Anybody who's been it's, in the it's very, room, it's very humid out there. Trust me. Yeah. Anybody who's been in a weight room at 6 a.m. before their 7 a.m. class to get their lift in because coach said to, they're invested. Anybody who's gone out and run stadiums in the little bit of free time that they have to make sure that their quads are ready for that off-ball explosion is invested. Sorry, got to work on my quads, bro. Nobody stumbles into being a D1 athlete. You don't get lucky and find yourself on a full ride scholarship. They're invested too. It's just that the mindset is investment means money. No, it doesn't. No, it doesn't. It can mean time. It can mean energy. It can mean emotion. It can mean a lot of different things. If you think football players are not invested and you say, Dexter says, I'm talking financial investment. Of course you are, because that's the only thing. That's the only thing that, that, but it's not the only thing. These players, Build a brand. Remember, they're not getting paid to play football. That's not where the money comes from. They're getting paid to represent people, places, and things with the brand that they have built. A brand that you have to because, invest because, to build. Because they play football. And how do they which, become which, D1 football players? Because they played football. They are getting paid because they are a recognizable person. They are recognizable because they're football stars. I will agree. Then why are we not getting paid? We're recognizable people. We do. We get endorsements. That's NIL by the letter of the definition. That is NIL. Every time that I go, hey, guys, I'm I'm a, stream, I we'll must be, be right that back. third string lineman. Then anyway, hey, I listen, this is going to be the worst thing I've ever said to you. That's how the game gets played, man. The left guard at Furman ain't getting NIL deals. Right? This is, I feel like a, I almost said a bad word right there for saying it. But the, 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 the world is cruel and harsh sometimes. It just is. The left guard at Furman is not making NIL money. At least not that I'm aware of. Maybe they are. He could be. Might be. I mean, maybe not to the degree that we're talking. But I'll still. tell you right now, if I'm a local restaurant in the area, I'm 100% throwing NIL at every offensive say, lineman. That, that left guard at Furman may Hell be yeah. making more money than you and I combined you, you, right now. We don't know. Right. We don't know. You might be right. But the point here, a brand they could not build without stadiums they didn't build, et cetera, et cetera. You're not wrong. It's a partnership, my dudes. It's a two-way street. But these players, 
strap in on Saturday. Sorry, not just on Saturdays or football season. It's a year round thing. It's a year round thing. They invest too. But just because you own the building doesn't mean, it, again, you, you know what happens to a 77,000 person stadium if the football players all leave? It sits empty. It costs you money. It's a two-way street. All right, we got to get away from this because uh, we got a lot more that we got to get to. And I don't mean to spend uh, all this time on this. I suspect, though, great one, we're coming back to it. Hey, it's 7.05 in the morning. It's almost time to work. When you get to work, you're going to take a break. When you're going to take a break, you're going to talk sports. You're going to talk sports. You need this. It's the shortest intro ever. Shut the hell up. It is the water cooler cheat sheet. The top three sports stories you need to know before you get to the office and start talking sports with your coworkers this AM. Let us dive right in with our number one. A new NCAA transfer. Stop me if you've heard this before. Sounds really familiar. A new NCAA transfer rule will allow all undergraduate athletes to transfer and play immediately if they be specific. Why is that we're not pronounced immediately? Why is it immediately? I think you need to move on. If they meet, sp- <laughs> if they meet specific academic requirements, as the Division One Council on Wednesday approved emergency legislation announced by the NCAA. Now, it is not official and final. They do not go official and final until the meetings end later today. Then the rule would still need to be formally approved by the NCAA's executive board on Monday. But Heather Denich says that is a formality at this point. Poof. The rule will provide immediate eligibility to any athletes who have transferred during the 23-24 academic year, including football players who entered the transfer portal this past Tuesday and are in the portal during the window, which is open now, as long as they are academically eligible and meeting progress towards degree requirements at the new school. So basically, not only... Do you have to find a new school? But you also have to find a new school that takes your credits. You know who this actually has a uh, adverse impact on? Players at schools like Liberty. Players at smaller schools who are maybe not uh, academically uh, credentialed that those credits won't transfer to bigger schools. They'll find a way around it. We'll find out. That's There'll be, be some sort of equivalency tests to be taken or something like that, that is a strong possibility and i am curious to see does this start to and this is just me being a dork does this start to move over into the realm of academia do, do schools start looking at transfer students and going yeah you know this kid took these classes but they took them at an unaccredited university or a, a university whose credits we don't accept for whatever reason, but we really want them to play here. So we came up with this new test that if you come here and you took whatever study at that old school, we are going to have you take the test for our version of that class. And if you pass it, we'll just give you the credit. I'm interested to see how that plays out. It worked for Bobby Boucher. Remember that time the bourbon dogs won the... Okay. The mud dogs won the Boyman Bowl. That's it. I'm your daddy. Roboto. Okay. I got to stop. Is that what some of your family looks Revolta. like in, in, in Louisiana? I don't know. Is that typecasting? I don't know. May I plead the fifth? Uh, so the legislation will not limit the number of times an athlete can transfer. There are still two transfer windows and athletes may not transfer mid year and play for a second school in the same season, but you may now transfer as many times as you like, as long as you have eligibility the division one council meets again today they will finalize their acceptance of this rule and then on monday the ncaa's executive board will meet they will put the final stamp of approval on this before these rules these litigate let it protocol regulations relied rules go into place we'll see what happens there let us go to item number two 
Caitlin Clark set all the records. Rewrote the college record books for women's college basketball. Caitlin Clark was drafted to the WNBA on Monday night. It was drafted to the WNBA in front of a record television audience of nearly 2.5 million people outpacing the Can't previous record by 2 million people. Can't prove it was just for her. Doesn't matter who it was for. She did that. It was uh, No, Camilla Cardosa did that. I, I can I can say it just as okay. well as you can say then it, Caitlin Clark. That, just to make the great one happy. Maybe 2.5 million didn't tune in for Caitlin Clark, but they were tuned in when Caitlin Clark was drafted. There we go. That's accurate. Okay. That, that's very accurate. However, considering of all women's college basketball games, the most watched five all feature Caitlin Clark, not anybody else. So people like losers. I mean, that's that's on them. Well, I'll tell you what. I hope that I am a loser too because Caitlin Clark finalized an endorsement deal with Nike yesterday to the tune of eight figures and a signature shoe. Rob, you're you're not a loser. You're a two-time champion. Two-time, two-time. Shucky ducky quack quack. Non-wrestling people are like, what the hell did you just say? All right, Caitlin Clark got No, that. wrestling fans are still saying that. Shucky ducky quack quack. It's, it's, he just decided to make that up. But anyway. Uh, Caitlin Clark getting a fat stack from Nike. She will also be getting her own shoe. So you can add that to. Did she Did she sign with, with, uh, with Ice though? Or with Ice Cube? Uh, she do I do that? Not, I'm not yet. She hasn't because all those things, won't she make more money if she signs with, with, him? yes, she would. And I'm glad you brought that up because coming up in just a little Cause while, Rob would have already signed with it, you know, cause money An eight figure <laughs> contract. Bye. You almost cursed. You, 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 you mouthed the word. No, I didn't. I said an eight figure contract. Everybody saw it. Bye. I love y'all a lot, but I'm gone. And I'll tell you what. I get an $8 million contract. I'm leaving. I'll come back. I'll build this, the Triumph Stadium myself. All right? Caitlin getting paid. Now, this is also interesting because the salary that Caitlin Clark agreed to with the Indiana Fever dropped four-year deal worth $338,000. That is a $76,000 base salary as a rookie. It will move up over the four years, but will never reach $100,000 a season. And there's a lot of people out there that are real mad about this because yeah, all those people, if you want her to get a bigger salary, watch the WNBA, you don't watch it. It doesn't make enough money for them to pay bigger salaries. That's really what it comes down to. We are going to get to that conversation coming up in just a little while because we got some interesting text about it already and we haven't even gotten to the segment so stay tuned for that because it's coming up very shortly item number three the nba play-in tournament continued yesterday evening we had an initial game between the philadelphia 76ers and the miami heat and boy howdy was it not short on Jerama, 105-104, the Sixers knock off the Heat. The 76ers are now the seven seed in the East. They will take on the New York Knickerbockers in the first round of the NBA playoffs. The Miami Heat will wait for their fate on Friday as they play in the elimination game of the NBA's play-in tournament. 25 points for Tyler Hero, who had to take over after Jimmy Butler left the game with just 19 on 5 of 18 shooting at the end of the first quarter. Jimmy Buckets collapsed down to the ground. He came back up holding his knee. He did stay in the game, but he scored only 12 more points, and there was very clearly something jacked up about him. It is feared that playoff Jimmy has an MCL injury. He will be going for evaluation today, catching that MRI this afternoon to determine if he will be able to play on Friday when the Miami Heat take on the Chicago Bulls in the elimination game. 
Uh, for the 76ers, 23 out of Joel Embiid led all scores on the 76ers team. Tobias Harris had nine. Kyle Lowry had seven. My dog, Tyrese Maxey. I love this guy's game, man. Hating ass Mario yesterday told us on the show, hey, Keep an eye on this guy because I think he's an X factor. Last night, he was just one of six from three, but six of 16 from the floor with six assists to go with 19 points. Kelly Oubre Jr. had a couple of clutch field goals down the stretch. This game was a game to the dying gasp of it. The 76ers also got 20 points, a legacy game from Nick Batum, who went 7 of 12, including 6 of 10 and 5 boards off the bench. 20 points chipped in by Batum. The 76ers again move on to take on the Knicks. The Heat go to the elimination game. And in said elimination game, they will take on the Chicago Bulls. Because last night, the Bulls ended the season of the Atlanta Hawks 131-116. Your final in that one. You had 30 From Murray, 21 from Bogdanovich, 22 from Young, 22 from Capella, and the rest of the team as a whole got 21 combined points for the Atlanta Hawks. They shot 29% from deep, 45% from the floor, but the 42 points of Kobe White was what Miami needed. They got 22 from DeMar DeRozan. They got 24 from Vucevic. They got 19 from Dosimu. This Bulls team looked like a playoff team. The problem, eight combined, excuse me, 18 combined bench points. Whenever Chicago went to the bench, that was when Atlanta was able to have their starters start to chip away at the total. We're going to talk more about these games later on, but the Chicago Bulls and the Miami Heat set to match up Friday night. The winner will be the eight seed in the Eastern Conference playoffs to take on the Boston Celtics in round one tonight. Sacramento, New Orleans, no Zion Williamson. That means the two teams that would be favored in the play and elimination games, both missing their superstars as Zion is out for the Pellies. And it looks like maybe potentially Jimmy buckets could be out for the Miami heat. How much of an impact does that make? What terrible timing for new Orleans and Miami. We will talk about those games later on in the radio broadcast. Let's talk about this Caitlin Clark thing when we come back. Cause a lot of people are up in they feels about it. And you know, me liberal of the woke warrior is going to take the side that's going to get the rest of his Liberob loving friends a little bit heated. We'll talk about that next on the Rob Brown Show in the Fan Upstate. Houston. All right, guys, quick live reading. We're coming right back. I'm going to go make some NIL money. Stay right there. Weather guy. 
Tons of sunshine for today, warming up to a high of 87. It really Last is. Tonight, 64, but a chance of and a half. mid-80s. Slight Perfect chance throwback. for a Saturday near 80. Sunday, rain looking likely. I'm meteorologist Michael Carroll on the fan upstate. Right now, it's 59. Is this house a good price compared to others in the area? Are prices going up or down? If I don't make an offer right this very moment, will I miss my chance? These are just some of the questions a home buyer might ask. And these are the sorts of questions an agent who is a Realtor can help answer. Because Realtors have the expertise, data, and access to specialty training to help you navigate the process of buying a home. They provide support, guidance, and have your back every step of the way. That's what Realtors do, because that's who we are. Realtors are members of the National Association of Realtors. For the ones who work hard to ensure their crew can always go the extra mile. And the ones who get in early so everyone can go home on time. There's Granger, offering professional grade supplies backed by product experts so you can quickly and easily find what you need. Plus, you can count on access to a committed team ready to go the extra mile for you. Call or click Granger.com or just stop by. Granger, for the ones who get it done. Hey everyone, this is Brett Boone. What you know it? I've got a podcast going strong in our fourth year. Tune in as I sit down with my friends, some of the biggest names in sports, media, entertainment, for a lot of fun and in-depth conversations. As you know, baseball's been my life. It's been in the family for a long time, and it's a lot more than that here. It's sort of like taking a ride in a golf cart around a beautiful track. Join me every week for multiple episodes on the Brett. You know, I don't watch F1, but Lego just released the limited edition F1 car, Max Verstappen's, and I'm considering buying it. I don't watch F1. I watched Max Verstappen race like three times in my life. But I saw it and I'm like, that's really cool. I kind of want that. This Lego, does it cost $350? Sure it does. I uh, I once went to the mall specifically because I was going to buy the Millennium Falcon. Yeah, you did. Yeah. Nope. <laughs> Even with your talent, salary, that's still, yeah, that's, no. My nephew did get me Luke's X-Wing for Christmas, though. I haven't put it together yet. So we talked about this a little bit in the water cooler cheat sheet. Caitlin Clark's rookie salary numbers were released. She signed a four-year deal with the Indiana Fever, who drafted her number one overall, and perhaps, I think definitely, the most anticipated and talent-stacked WNBA draft in the history of the league. The deal is worth $338,056 over the course of four years. In her rookie year, she will earn $76,535. She is projected to earn an annual salary of $97,582 by the end of the four-year contract if she doesn't sign an extension. There's no world in which, unless she just hates it in Indianapolis, Indiana, that Caitlin Clark's not going to get a uh, a pay raise at some point. But even with a pay raise, it would be about $100,000 or more, but in that ballpark. Unsurprisingly, a ton of fans got really, really mad about it. Pointed out that she makes fractions of the male counterpoints in the NBA. For instance, Victor Wimbayama, the first pick in last year's NBA draft, a four-year contract with the Spurs worth $55 million, including $12 million plus in his first season. Yahoo Sports went and compiled a, a bunch of tweets that people sent in response to the contract that Caitlin Clark signed. Like, for instance, Los Texas Diablo, who said, quote, this is bogus. They have made more headlines than any man that is currently playing pay women what they deserve. Uh, at Chonky Cleric, which is a great name, said... You say Chonky or Chonky? Chon chonky. Huh? It's a big Chonky boy. Okay. All right. Statistically... So like a fat fryer. Yeah. Okay. I immediately went like a, like a fat monk. 
Statistically, the yeah, greatest but alliter- college alliteration. I'm sorry, I like which it. is better. Yeah. The statistically greatest college basketball player in history is getting paid a five digit salary in a professional sports league. Ridiculous. At Justine Bianca said, I can't believe these numbers are real. They're literally robbing these girls. And quote, uh, at Los Poyos TV said, This is so bad. She'll probably make 50 times this in endorsements. Well, it turns out she did. Because Nike signed her to an endorsement in which they will be releasing the Caitlin Clark signature shoe, which you better believe your boy's buying a pair of, ain't no doubt, uh, which is a deal that is expected to be eight figures. Nothing says second place like the Caitlin Clark shoe. Nothing says goat like the goat shoes. So let's, let's, let's kind of evaluate this. By the way, the average salary in the WNBA is 147745 That is the average salary. The highest paid, according to the internet, is Arike, I can't say her last name, and Kaylee Cooper and Jewel Lloyd. Uh, they uh, make 241984 yep. And Caitlin Clark, within two years, is going to sign a contract that's going to put her in that mix. There are questions about Caitlin Clark's game translating to the next level. It's a much more physical style of basketball. Will she be able to survive? Were these vocal that people that are that are complaining, were they complaining last year or the year before, or the year before that? Uh, people don't tend to complain about things that aren't on their radar, which is exactly the point. The investment value of the WNBA as a league is $475 million. Most every NBA team individually is worth twice that. I was going to say that's the entire league. Okay. It is the entire league is worth less than half a billion dollars. W or excuse me, NBA franchises is individual teams are valued at more than that. Now, I will be very clear. I absolutely think Caitlin Clark is worth more than $100,000 a year just in putting her face on your stadium alone, as we know. As we know, the Indiana Fever sold out their tickets before Caitlin Clark even got drafted. Those people took a gamble that Indiana wasn't going to pull the shock of shocks of the century of the millennium and draft somebody else at number one. That would have been shocking if they it did would have that. absolutely been a shock. We also know that the most uh, the most sought after tickets in the WNBA for every team are the games where the Indiana Fever are coming to town. Caitlin Clark is absolutely worth more than a hundred thousand dollars a year. That's why Nike's not dumb. They're not paying her eight figures worth of endorsement deal just because she. It had a great college career. They know the value of this young lady and the branding that comes with her name, her image, and her likeness. I'll throw the snark aside for a moment. By the way, minimum salary in the NBA is $1.1 million. Correct. Correct. And I also have to add, and this is the part that I have aggravated some of my <laughs> friends with here, every year, the NBA gives the WNBA about $16.5 million just to cover the expenses of the league because historically, the league has been unable to cover their own expenses and up the annual salary of players. So they're unprofitable. Effectively. Now, I am also going to call the shot here. This year, the WNBA will be profitable. And it has a lot to do with Caitlin Caitlin Clark. It also has to do with Cameron Brink and Angel Reese and Rikia Jackson and all of these. I think the best draft class in the history of the WNBA moving up. Cardoso. You you, 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 you forgot, you know, the the champ. Yeah, that's okay. The point here is, I think it's going to be a profitable year this year for the WNBA as it was a profitable year for women's college basketball. A sport that outdrew the men's college national championship game by four plus million viewers. All right. Correct me if I'm wrong and you will, uh, but it seemed like sports were up viewership wise across the board because it seems like everything was, this was bigger than last year. This was bigger than last year for every sport in 2023. Everything except golf. Golf's master's rating were at its lowest since COVID. And we'll talk about that later in the show, but yes, you are correct. 
NBA attendance went up by 2% in person this year. I think some of that has to do, without a doubt, with the sit-out rules. Got to play X amount of games to be eligible for uh, individual awards. Baseball attendance has been rising. I absolutely think the pitch clock has something to do with that. As bad as it might be for pitchers, it is good for baseball, the bigger bases, uh, helping with more offense, et cetera. Yes, numbers are up across the board, but there is a difference between basketball, NBA, going up 1.8% in attendance, and the women's game outdrawing the men's by 4 point some odd million viewers. That's not 1% growth. That's like a 1,000. That is exponential growth. And again, I'm not saying it is solely because of Caitlin Clark, but you better believe she is the face of the movement. She's not alone. There are the Camilla Cardosos and the Angel Reese's and the Cameron Brinks and the Paige Buckers, uh, Beckers and all these other players, but Caitlin Clark was the face of it. That's, that's not a debate I'm willing to have. That's just a fact. That's just true. So yes, I do believe these women should be getting paid more, but I also understand that, and this is the part that a lot of people aren't comprehending, you got to be making the money to get them. I can't pay you money I ain't got. Now, the argument's going to be that the owners are still making money. The coaches are still making money. They're still making money. And the players but are, are they? I mean, you just mentioned that the NBA has to help them out in order to stay afloat. So are those teams actually making money? Are those owners actually making money? If they are, they're probably making money Elsewhere in business. Becky Hammonds is a head coach in the WA. Her salary is up over a million dollars a year. Yes. The money is coming from somewhere. And again, I think that over the past handful of years, over the past handful of years, women's basketball, women's sports as a whole, have been gaining in popularity. Where is the outrage that a coach is making more than the players? How can this be? In fairness, it's Becky Hammonds. I know, but still, yeah, I, I would I would say that uh, Caitlin, that's her name, is is a bigger name than Becky Hammond. You're probably not wrong. You're probably not wrong. But uh, again, Caitlin Clark is gonna have to prove herself all over again, as is Angel Reese and Camilla Cardoso and Cameron Brink and Rakia Jackson and all these great players that are on their way up. They will all have to prove themselves at the next level. And I'm going to go ahead and call the shot. Caitlin Clark's going to be the first WNBA player to sign a million dollars salary. It's going to happen. Because I don't, there's not a world in which can, in which her game doesn't translate to the WNBA. You make it translate. But there is a world where people forget about her after six months and the WNBA plods along like it is right now. We'll find out. We'll find out. Which wouldn't be her fault. It's, it's the, the product as a whole. You are correct. But again, the Fever sold out tickets before she was on that team. Never happened. The hot, the most profitable WNBA ticket right now, Indiana Fever at Chicago Sky. Camila Cardoso and Angel Reese versus Caitlin Clark. If that game's on, that game will be primetime television. That game will be placed in a crown jewel of the week spot. That doesn't happen. It's going to happen this year. So there's going to be a balance. Both sides of these are of this argument have to be in tandem. On one hand, the folks who want Caitlin Clark to get paid a million dollars a year for playing in the WNBA do have to recognize that part of that is, is her doing what she did for women's college ball, which is establishing and developing and pushing the, prob the popularity and the productivity so that more people are coming to games, watching it on TV, et cetera. I promise you, if the Indiana Fever go on TV and play the Chicago Sky and they get a 4.8, hell, forget that. Let's go with the college number. 19.2 million person audience. Yeah, advertisers are going to want in on that. And then there's more money and now the salaries can go up. On the flip side, the other side of the equation is people that are going, oh, you, you, know, you know, the money is what the money is, have to recognize Caitlin Clark's value is not just as a basketball player, it's as a celebrity. By the way, I heard like the very first game that she's playing in, it's going to be on the ESPN2. So I, I'm just, I, I'm until you can at least get on the main channel, you're still going to have the same problems you're having right now. I will make a bet with you that that gets moved to one. I'd make that bet. We'll have to see what it's up against. I don't think it's going to matter. All right, let's take a break. We'll come back here in just a minute. we got plenty more to get to on the Rob Brown Show and the Fan Upstate.
All right, guys, go step away for just a minute. Y'all stay right there. Be right back. Guys and gals, we are back. Oh, you mean the white line that the tires are clearly on? Yes, Alonzo does call me to the window to get angry at bad parking. And they're also over on the front. Of course they are. Ugh. You expect your home to protect everything you love, but you don't expect the waste water is breaking down your crawl space and damaging your home. Musty smell. One of our guys, your favorite guy. He's over the line too, right here. Crawl space is compromised, but there's one. Your favorite guy. She's a truck guy. Valley, Valley Foundation Services. We put water back in its place. Get your free inspection. We that put water back in its place. In the toilet? And they try to frighten you into calling. I'm not here to do that. Tax Relief Advocates is different. TRA is here to tell you that if you owe money to the IRS, whether it's 5000 50000 or 500000 we have a solution. And Stephen, I wasn't ignoring you earlier. No, I don't like Applebee's because it's... It's another one of those restaurants that you don't go, you know, I've got a hankering for this. I'm going to Applebee's because it's not, what, what are they specifically known for other than catering to women? Applebee's just got names. I know. Okay. And they had a stupid song. That wasn't Applebee's fault. You're right. It they wasn't. didn't use it in their commercials, though. That is their fault. I mean, you know, uh, they. If you were, uh, can you blame them? I mean, I mean, it was wildly popular. The worst song ever. You know, if I want tacos, I know where the taco places are. If I want ribs, I know where the rib places are. Applebee's is another one of those restaurants that plays into women's indecisions where they can't, where they cannot, they cannot decide what they want. So they get to go there and stare at the menu for 35 minutes while they're staring at the menu. They're constantly drinking stuff and they're making more money that way. Oh, why is that the funniest thing you've ever Cause it's accurate. That's why.
The Rob Brown Show rolls on. It is the Fan Upstate. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. I am Rob Brown, the great one, Lonzo, on the ones and twos today. Where haven't we been? We've talked about how the dad from Dirty Dancing was the only good guy in the movie. Uh, same with with King Triton in The Little Mermaid. We're really hitting all uh, the, the the top issues today. Really getting in uh, on the big stuff. I will say this. Like or dislike, call her consolation, Caitlin, or don't. 75K does feel kind of silly, right? Like, there are multiple people in this building who make more money than Caitlin Clark. I, by the way, seriously doubt that. And and the other thing is... That there's uh, more pe- people in this building who make more than Caitlin Clark? Yeah, I seriously, seriously doubt that. There might be one. Mm. There, might, there might be mm. one, and that, that's about it. Either way, Caitlin. Clark. Of course, you have an, a bigger salary than mine, and comparatively, you can probably look at. It, but I yeah, can't. I'm obviously in the Caitlin Clark. Department. I mean, look at what you're wearing, dude. Yeah, no. yeah I can't yeah. afford that. Um, the the thing is, she's the number one pick. How much did the second pick make? I'm gonna I'm gonna guess Camila Cardoso is probably gonna be in the range of sixty five annually, seventy annually. So she made less. So so the number one pick made the number one salary that she could be paid during current economic trends uh, in the WNBA. Cardoso is going to make an estimated 73000 on a four-year deal annually. So a little bit less. Yeah, slightly less. All right, we'll get away from that. I just thought it was an interesting conversation because uh, nuance matters. You know where nuance does not matter? Nuance does not matter when a league says you don't go to this school no more. Toronto Raptors, or should I say former Toronto Raptors player, John Tay Porter has caught a ban for life from the National Basketball Association. Uh, there was no big investigation into this. DraftKings just pretty much put it out there and the NBA looked and went, oh yeah, no, you... uh." You can't, you can't, uh, you can't do that. Porter had multiple prop bets on games in which he left early with injuries or an illness and hit the under in those games, played long enough for his stats to register as a live bet, and then checked himself out. Uh, He is gone from the NBA. That one is up. That one is over. Let's be clear. I understand that there are a lot of people. In fact, there was a joke yesterday go and be around because uh, Shams dropped the bomb, dropped the Woj bomb. How bad you got to feel if you're Shams and you're you're dropping Woj bombs? Anyway, Shams dropped the bomb. The Jonte Porter caught a lifetime ban. Uh, Shams Sharina, who by the way is a spokesperson for DraftKings and for, for for the gambling outlet that got Jonte Porter banned. I think that looks great on that company that that, that they're willing to say, hey. We won't allow this because that puts standards above company. And I, th- I think it's a good look on them. The NBA says, yep, you don't go to this school no more, John Tay Porter. And here's uh, the reality. Yeah. Can he play? Yeah. Can he play in Europe? Uh, I'm going to say if he's not playing for an NBA team, sure. But if the NBA. They just banned him for life. So, I mean, from the league. I'm just curious because of of associations between the European League and the NBA would the would the European well, League right, right, uphold the ban right now there is no European League that has a direct affiliation with the NBA there's gonna be that's an NBA project but they they forward. are a pipeline so th- so they've gotten I mean they they have to have a, a working relationship uh I don't necessarily know I and I say I don't know like I don't know I don't just, know. Yeah, I'm just curious if they're willing and to also, take someone like that that's banned by the NBA. And also, there's a ton of leagues in Europe. It's not like one league in Europe. There's Spanish leagues, French leagues, Sp- German leagues. Well, he could probably European play leagues. in Belarus because we already already know Stupid about those people. Belarus. Yeah. By the way, the Belarusian people, lovely. It's just their their leadership that I question. All right, lovely people, the Belarusians. Power to the people. Yeah. Go Belarus. When the when the revolution happens in Belarus. Robin Lanza's faces should be on the flags of liberty. Okay. We're, we're committed to this. So John Tay Porter catches the lifetime ban. For those of you that have said, you know, Rob, I'm kind of uncomfortable with the rise of sports gambling 
in popularity across these great United States? Well, the first response I've always had is, mind your business. I am concerned with the possibility of stuff like this. I mean, if, if everything's on the up and up, fine. I mean, you're an adult, do whatever. But when you start doing stuff like this, then it makes people who are already suspicious even more suspicious, and it hurts the game, whatever game it is. I'll tell you when I get worried. When I start getting worried is when this happens and guys catch a suspension. Calvin Ridley, I'm not so – yes, it's bad. Calvin Ridley bet on NFL football. He's an NFL player. You can't do that. Kevin Ridley was not in the league when this happened. Remember, he was nursing an injury. He was in rehab. He was away from the team. Like, yeah, you can't do it. But at the same time, it's not as bad as John Tay Porter. John Tay Porter got cut, got caught, made some dumb decisions. And now he is, he is, he is banished from the NBA for it. You can gamble all you want now, John Tay Porter. Have a ball. I hope you're real good at it because you could have made millions of dollars just playing NBA basketball. And now you're going to be throwing $10 bets around on DraftKings trying to make that money up. It's not going to go great. I wish you the best of luck. Uh, this to me is the NBA's acknowledgement. And I think to some degree, a shot across the bow of all the rest of the leagues going, this is a big deal. This must be taken seriously. It is not an option. You have to treat this as the big deal that it is. And I, I, I ultimately think you've, you've, you've to some degree done that here. You have effectively shown that this is not going to be something that is going to be overlooked. This is not something that is going to be tolerated. This is not something that we're going to give you the old freebie oopsie daisy on. This is a big deal. This is a problem. This is something that leagues are going to have to address and handle moving forward. I think they know that. I don't think it's going to come as a shock or a surprise to anybody, frankly. And I think that this is the only way to handle it at this point. This to me is the definition of the system working. This to me is a league going, yeah, no, dude, that's not, uh, we're, we, we, we can't, we can't allow this to happen. We can't allow this to be something that takes place. If you are apprehensive about the rise in popularity of gambling, I, for the record, understand it. I get it. I disagree with it, but I get it. It makes sense. That being said, like I said, this is the system working by definition. This is the system recognizing that there is a problem, recognizing that there is an issue, immediately taking steps to limit the issue and to remove a guy who categorically, undeniably broke the rules and create a system of, of punishment, of discipline that works. That's what this is. That's what this was. And I'm glad I'm 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 very glad that it played out the way that it did, because the only way that you are going to keep this issue from propagating further down the line. The only way you're going to keep this issue from propagating further down the line is if you handle it with the ban hammer is if you handle it by saying this isn't an option. This isn't a ha, ha funny moment. This isn't something that we will even pretend to be okay with. You got to go. I think the NBA, and by the way, congrats to the NBA for handling this the way that it needed to be handled because you've just set precedent. It would have been real, real bad if you went, all right, one year suspension for this guy. One year suspension for this cat, and then he can come back. No, no, you're done, bro. You can't make any more money. You can't utilize the NBA in your own branding and imaging, right? Like this guy, I would assume, I would assume this dude isn't going to be able to go around Toronto, Canada, or wherever else 
and go, hey, come on down to Jacques Used Cows and come see former NBA player John Tay Porter. I, I, I don't think he can do that. I certainly can't do it in the city of the team that invested in him, developed him as a player, and then he just leaves. But he can book a, a autograph shows with his buddy Pete Rose. Sure he can. Sure he can. I mean, listen, that's not to say John Tay Porter can't do a book deal. John Tay Porter can't do a tell-all. John Tay Porter can't do whatever. But none of that is going to match up. And, and, and for the record, I'm going to go ahead and call the shot. I'm not going to tell you which one it is. I'll write it down on the tablet of truth and save it for a sunny day when it happens. John Tay Porter is going to end up with an endorsement deal with a gambling company. And I know which one it's going to be. I'm not going to tell you because I don't want to get in trouble for disparaging the good name of this book. He's going to get an endorsement. Somebody's going to hire him to come be the spokesperson. We love gambling so much. We'll give up an NBA career for it. <laughs> Yuck. It's going to happen. But come on down to Johnny's gambling house. John Tay's here. Porter's casino and bar. He's he's going to get a deal. It's not going to pay what the NBA salary would have paid. As Lonzo pointed out, minimum salary in the NBA is over a million dollars a season. He ain't getting that. So I congratulate the NBA because they looked at a various, a uh, very serious situation. They did their investigation. They reached their conclusion quickly. They provided their evidence thoroughly. And then they said, yeah, no, we're not doing this. Cause I will tell you, I agree with Lonzo for me on both ends. Number one, I don't want the ethics of the leagues. Uh, I don't want the integrity <laughs> of the sports that we watch to be questioned. I don't want every time a wide receiver runs a cross pattern, gets hit in the hands and drops on the turf to have to go. Did he bet the under on his prop today? Did he bet the under on his on his receiving prop or his catches prop? Did he bet the under on his team total? And that's why he's out there putting balls on the turf. What I want to be able to say is, if he is, if he is, he is going to sacrifice his career for what? A bet on the under? Because the books, they understand DraftKings, FanDuel, whatever. They all understand that the best thing in the world for them is a positive relationship with the leagues. The last thing they need is for those leagues to start going, you can't use us for profit. I guess I guess I don't get because I've never even seen that kind of money. When you have that kind of money, why are you betting? To, I mean, is it the thrill of the betting? Or when you could just take that money that you have and invest it somewhere and, and in a way that you can make money that way I mean, is it just about the thrill of the bet no in this in the case of john Tay porter where he's betting on his own numbers it's kind of like insider trading i know i'm hitting the under because what i'm gonna do is i know i've got to play x amount of minutes right right i get to, to, to go so what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna go out there i'm gonna play for the 12 minutes i have to play to log a stat and then i'm gonna get sick but what is the why why do you do that when you're already making good money why do you do that? Do you not have enough money or is it just about the thrill of doing something and not getting caught? Great one. You and I both know billionaires ain't billionaires because they like to have fun. Billionaires are billionaires because there's never enough money. Yeah. But do they take that risk that could remove their way of making money? Maybe some do, but I think for the most part, those guys are smart enough to go, okay, that's too risky. I don't think it's smart enough to go to that's too risky. I think it's smart enough to not get caught. What John T. Porter did was dumb as hell, was dumb as hell to handle his business the way he handled it. I think it's just a matter of if I know that I can throw down a $500 bet on my under and then I'm the one that sets the under. Yeah, no, that's uh, that's uh, that's that's free money, even if it's only a little. Yeah, but I was going to say, but that's $500. And if you're making like $10 million a year, what is five hundred dollars? Well, for the record, I don't know that his bets were five hundred dollars. Um, but if you have a million dollars, and then you can go out there and you can make a quarter million dollars, right? 
that's that's big money. And if you do that multiple times, then you've yeah okay all right yeah. I just I just think it's more about the thrill than about the need of more money. Uh, to some people it might be, but it, uh, listen, there's no thrill in over under 12. I'm going to go score 11 and check out. That's not thrill. That's money making. It's a thrill if you're in the NBA and you say I'm going to bet LeBron to score 23 and a half against the uh, uh, Denver in the first game. That's a thrill. I got no impact on that game. I can't control if LeBron do or don't. I can't control if my over under hits, and that's what this guy did, and that's why he got canned. I congratulate the NBA for taking that step, for deciding the ban hammer on offense number one is the way to go uh, as a gambler, so that my thing doesn't go away. Sports Flash! Let's, t- Let's talk some baseball. The Atlanta Braves finished off a sweep of the Houston Astros yesterday with a 5-4 to four win in extra innings. The Braves notched two in the eighth after a throw-in error scored Michael Harris the second. The win moves Atlanta to 12-5 and five on the year and drops Houston to just 6-14. and 14. A new NCAA transfer rule will allow all undergraduate students to transfer and play immediately if they meet specific academic requirements. The decision needs to be finalized today and approved by the executive board Monday, but that is expected to be a formality. The new legislation will not limit the number of times an athlete can transfer, though they will be prevented from transferring mid-season. Tune in this afternoon from 3 to 7 p.m. for our Brand new local show, Wired to Wire. Cole Bryson and Diesel will get you up to date on the latest local and national sports news. Great guests, great debate, and of course, a whole lot of fun. And it's all Wired to Wire. Come on. Is switching your wireless service to Total by Verizon easy? And you get unlimited 5G data, $25 a line for four lines on the unlimited plan, and an amazing price. The catalyst, Caitlin Clark. I like that, Trey. That's good. That's good. It's a catalyst for what? The catalyst. She was using a needle mover. A needle mover. Protects against fleas, ticks, heartworm disease, roundworms, and hookworms. All in one delicious beef flavored soft chew. These with beef. Dogs with a history of seizures or disorders. Dinner. Dogs should be tested for existing heartworm infection prior to starting to prevent it. Ask your vet about NextGuard Plus Chews. As an educator, Mr. Nelson's teachings are still being. Mr. Nelson. Education is the most powerful weapon you can use to change the world. Mr. Nelson taught hope. Everyone can rise above their circumstances if they are dedicated and passionate. And giving our best efforts. It's always possible until it's done. Mr. Nelson Mandela's teaching not only united Mr. us, they inspire us today. Inspiration. Pass it on. Passiton.com. 
Unique and unlike any other sports talk show, it's Bad MGM Tonight, Monday through Friday from 7 to 11, only on the fan. Bad MGM Tonight is a fan zone for casual and hardcore sports fans. Live sports betting updates for all of the night's games as they happen. The latest scores, sides, totals, props, parlays, futures, and much more with real time, relevant sports wagertainment tonight at 7. Bad MGM Tonight, exclusively on the fan. And on the Odyssey app. Upstate. official Rob Brown Lockdown. Manufactured locally for the Carolinas. This is the Rob Brown Show. Yeah. Rob only. The fan of states. Here we go with our number three of the Rob Brown Radio Program. Right here on the Fan Up State. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages. Great to have you. As we rock and roll through the second hour of the show. Hey, coming up later on today, we have got the legendary Rashad Beard, the host of the Panther Nation podcast, is going to join us on the show. We'll be talking to him about Carolina Panther draft philosophy. Uh, I love a good draft philosophy segment on the show. Best available, highest need, how you handling it. Uh, this year, if you're in charge, if you're Dan, wait, 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 that's a week from today. It is a week from today. And I hear that there's something going on with the station a week from today. Boy, howdy, Lonzo. You sure are good at this. You are absolutely correct. Mon ami. Uh, that is true. Categorically true. It is true because coming up a week from today, our guys, Diesel and Cole Bryson, will be live at Dave and Buster's for night number one of the NFL draft. And just because you were curious and you asked, I'll be there too. I'm even trying to talk the great one into coming to hang out with us at Dave and Buster's and play some video games in person. We'll see if it works or not. I don't know. What I do know, what I do know, is that coming up a week from today, it is round one of the NFL draft. What I do know is that coming up a week from today, the, who's got the number one overall pick? Chicago Bears. Chicago Bears, Bears, yeah. I forgot, because they weren't weren't the worst team in the league last year. The worst team in the league normally has the number one draft pick, right? That would be the the Carolina Panthers. That's right. I knew I was was forgetting something. But they, they traded that pick away. That they did. That they did. They traded that pick away to the uh, Chicago Bears, as a matter of fact. Uh, It turns out. Who knew? So, we will be there at Dave & Buster's next Thursday. Myself, Diesel, Cole Bryson, and potentially, perhaps, maybe, the great one himself, Lonzo, if we're all lucky. We'll find out. I'm looking forward to finding out, my friends. So, make sure you're there next Thursday. Uh, wire to wire with Colin Diesel at 3 to 7 p.m. And also Rob. Let's get some more sports in here, shall we? Let's get some more discussion going on the radio broadcast today. Let's go with the uh, man. I got so many stories I want to get to here. Oh, eh, Jason Kelsey. Yesterday, the Kelsey bros came up on the show. Travis got himself a hosting gig on a new game show. I think it's Netflix, if I recall correctly. Doesn't really matter. But a game show that Travis Kelsey is hosting. Of course, uh, Mr. Taylor Swift. Is it So You're Smarter Than a Fifth Grader? Because I seem to remember him mentioning that in an earlier podcast. Travis Kelsey game show. Uh, It is going to be, yes, it is. Yeah, he mentioned that like a month ago that they were working on that. So. Kansas City Chiefs tight end has booked his first TV series job and it's hosting a spinoff of the Fox game show, Are You Smarter Than a Fifth Grader, for Amazon's Prime Video. The new show is titled, Are You Smarter Than a Celebrity? 
and it will have adult contestants answering sixth grade level questions with the help of some famous faces. Amazon has ordered 20 episodes of the show hosted by the Super Bowl champ. Sixth grade level questions. I, I think you're fair. Real good. Yeah, I'm, I'm not bad Real at good. trivia, and this that's basically a trivia yeah. show. In fact, what we uh, what we might do, great one, when that show kicks off, and I don't know when that show airs for the first time because it's just going into production. Uh, I may very well be watching it and bringing the bringing the questions in the next day to see how we do. All right, we'll see. That's a little unfair that you're going to bring them in because then you don't have to answer them. All right, I'll have the I'll have the fiance write them down. I'll have the fiance track them. There's nothing she'll love more than me sounding like an idiot on the radio. Well, so, uh, that I was going to say, if we were going to do that, we need to bring in a third person to ask the questions who would only have the questions and not us. That way we wouldn't be privy to the questions that are being asked. That's the only way it would be fair. You know what? You know what? I'll see if I'll see if she wants to come on and host that segment. Are you smarter than a Rob Brown? Why is it about you? I said us. I mean, well, we'll, I let, mean, the, we'll let the listeners play, too. The, okay. All it's, right. It's, fine. It's, it's an all-inclusive it's just, show. Wow, man. So arrogant. It's an all-inclusive show. I'm, I'm, I'm invisible and hurt over here. Oh, stop it. Stop it. I said we, and you said you, but that's normal. You know me. I'm, I'm all, I, as T.O. once said, I love me some me. Anyway, uh, I said yesterday, Jason Kelsey Elitist. is the better Kelsey brother. All right. Jason Kelsey is the better Kelsey brother. And it's not just the fact that he showed up and participated in a WrestleMania moment this year, which was awesome. It was, although uh, Travis does have more Super Bowls. He does that. He does. Uh, and also, I agree with you. The more stuff like this comes out, the more I think TK is going for the three peat. And honestly, he'd probably step away if it wasn't for the fact that there's a three peat on the table right now. But get it or not, I think he's probably out. I think the next time the Chiefs lose the Super Bowl, he's out. Right. So Jason Kelsey was on his New Heights podcast, his New Heights podcast with his co host, Travis Kelsey. And he told Travis that he no longer possesses his Super Bowl ring. He has lost his Super Bowl ring. Uh, apparently, the Kelsey brothers were hosting at their alma mater of S Cincinnati Go Cats. The great Lom Baby Games? Lom Baby? Yeah, you should. Uh, they have a trophy because there's a, a running joke that that they would sign anything, and and one of them said they would not sign a baby, and then immediately people wanted them to sign their babies. I believe it was Jason who said he wouldn't. So they have a trophy of a baby modeled after one of his kids when she was a baby. And like, it's, yeah, uh, it's, it makes people really uncomfortable. I haven't seen the trophy, but apparently there's a really big one that just makes people go, um, that's I like weird. I like it. Way to be weird, Kelsey's. As Jason explained it, one of the challenges was for two students to dig through a giant vat of Skyline Chili. Now, I don't need to go off in this tangent again. Skyline Chili is terrible. It's terrible. It's the worst. Yeah, it's it's not it's good. Awful. It's not good, and I'm from Ohio. It's it just, no, is no. awful. If the thing that your city is most proud of is Skyline Chili, you don't get to be a city anymore. Sorry, Cincinnati. Give us the Reds and go away. All right? We want Joey B, well, the, Bengals the Reds, bad either. Yeah. and that's it. Okay. No, I just all want right. Joey B. Okay, all right. Joey Ice can come back. Uh, uh, the Reds, uh, Ellie De La Cruz can come to America. All the rest of you are banished from society for Skyline Chili. Anyway, Jason's also told the story in the past about how he misplaced his Super Bowl ring once before. He went to look for it. Turns out he stuffed it in a sock in his sock drawer. And so the gimmick of this game was that two students were going to dig through a giant vat of Skyline Chili consisting of chili, spaghetti, and cheese looking for pairs of socks with Super Bowl rings tied to them. One of the rings that Jason used, because Jason is me, was his actual Super Bowl ring. He took his actual, he's only got one. He's got one. Took his actual Super Bowl ring. Had. He had one. 
took his actual Super Bowl ring, put it inside of a sock, thought that he put it inside of a giant vat of Skyline Chili for a Cincinnati Bearcats student to dig down and find, and it uh, <clears throat> it never got found, apparently. When the proverbial dust cleared, according to Yahoo Sports, no one could find the white gold ring consisting of 219 diamonds and 17 rare green sapphires. Kelsey said on the podcast, quote, there was an unfortunateness. As you guys know, this game existed because I continuously lose my Super Bowl ring. I don't even know if Travis still knows this, but I legitimately lost my Super Bowl ring in the event. They could not find it. We have still yet to find it. All of this is stuff has been thrown away. So I think we can safely assume assume that my Super Bowl ring is in a landfill someplace in the Cincinnati tri-state area. I didn't think that would happen. So now there's going to be a run on landfills when more than likely it never made it into the chili. I mean, don't you, don't you think someone just put that in their pocket when they were putting the chili together? Maybe first off, I got to understand Un unless he personally, well, it's pretty dumb, but unless he personally put it in the chili, so uh, I know the majority of y'all don't live with me, okay? Uh, the, the overwhelming majority of the audience does not live with me. It's not 100%. That's probably the most accurate thing you've said today. It probably is. But the 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 point zero one percent of the listening audience that does live with me has asked me the question many times over, what were you thinking? And the answer to that question, Lonzo, more often than not is... You are not. Yeah. I don't know. I wasn't. I wasn't. Yeah, but dude, this is a Super Bowl ring that you lose continuously. Right. Yeah. I just, why, why, why use the real thing? Now, what I can say uh, is this. I'll give you the example. If you walk into the Casa de Love, where Rob lives, right to the inside of the front door on the wall, great one, there is a little wood bar with hooks that hang off of it and the keys to the car get hung on that hook. Do you know why? It is because right after I moved in with the lady friend to the Casa de Love, right after I moved in, Rob Brown had a remote that he had to go to. And Rob Brown uh, knew it was about a 37, 40 minute drive to this remote. So about 50 minutes before the remote started, I went, oh, time to go. Got to get there. And I went looking. Wow, you I, gave yourself an I a gave whole, myself like seven minutes a window. Way to go. Okay. Had, had you been to this place before? I'm very prompt. I had not. Trust in technology. GPS, baby. So I went to leave, and I could not find the key. And I tore the house up and I couldn't find the keys. Then I texted the fiance. I said, where are my keys? She said, why the hell would I know? They're not my keys. And I said, that's a very valid point. Have you seen them? And she said, no, I haven't seen your keys. Good luck. And I said, okay, thanks. And I continued and I continued. And wouldn't you know it, I eventually found the keys. Um, I had placed them somewhere very dumb in a hurry when I got home that afternoon. And so because I had that, uh, we'll call it a teachable moment. At this point in my life, when Rob Brown gets home from work or play or whatever he's out doing before he does anything else, the car keys get hung on the hook by the door. That way that never happens again. Jason's lost this ring a dozen times. It sounds like, and I'm not a fervent new heights listener. I check in every now and then specifically when they make announcement that they've got something big and fun going on. I'll be like, all right, let me check in on that. But I know that I've heard him tell the story about losing his ring a number of times. And so I would ask old Jason, I assume, and I could be wrong, that this is probably the second most important piece of jewelry that you own. I got to assume it's wedding ring one. Super Bowl ring two. And let's all be honest with each other. It's Super Bowl ring one, wedding ring two. I remember uh, losing my wedding ring one day while on the air. One of the few times that I got up and walked out of the studio while a show was going on. Yeah. And it's when I lost a ton of weight and I went to wash my hands and the ring came off. And I didn't notice it till I was doing the show. And then I just got up, didn't say anything, went in there and went through the trash and found it. And let's, so, uh, I, so I can't imagine, a, I mean, a, a Super Bowl would be second for me as far as, as far as rings go, 
But I, if I have a uh, penchant for losing my stuff, I am not going to do it on such a grand scale. It just, I, I mean, it makes it look like it's not that valuable to them. Let's let's call a spade a spade here. Getting a wedding ring's easy. I know a bunch of idiots who have done that. I know one guy with a Super Bowl ring, one in my entire life, and I know a lot of people. One guy with a Super Bowl ring. I, I, I have met with. a couple guys. I will tell you when they shake your hand and they have have it on their hand, you just look yep. at it. You can't help it. I know two guys with professional rings. I know one guy that used to play for the Lightning when they won a Stanley Cup. I know one NFL player with a Super Bowl ring. That's my entire list. And what I do know is that I know a bunch of idiots with wedding rings. Super Bowl rings are better and more valuable. Okay. The the one ring might mean something more to you. It might be your until, precious, obviously. Un, until September, of course. When, when that ring becomes uh, extremely valuable and the most important thing in the world to you. Yeah, 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 for sure. If I was a member of the Saints when we won our Super Bowl, no, 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 that's still the better ring. This ring means more, that's the better ring, okay? So you, you, when you lost this ring multiple times, here's what I don't get. It's not losing the ring because I'll be straight. I've lost my keys a number of times in the past. Now, since I moved in, I fixed that. So, but every time I move, you know, I'm going to lose my keys. You know, you're once. dooming yourself to losing your keys tomorrow. A hundred percent chance. Today will be the day that I get in a hurry and just flip them on the table, and then the cat knocks them off. There's a something. reason. There's a reason why Rob leaves the keys in the office door. Yes, there is. So I have lost my keys on my own desk. That's a fact. So, with all of that being said, uh, I love this story because uh, Jason, I'd ask, what, <clears throat> what are you, what are you? What are you doing, bro? Like, what are you doing? What wouldn't are you, you doing? wouldn't you be concerned if someone took it? Because uh, that would that's my concern. Well, I not I, that it got dumped out. Uh, my concern is it never made it into the chili. I was working under the assumption that like Jason set this up himself. For the record, there is a part of me that thinks in the back of my head, it's a stunt, it's a work, it's a podcast hype moment, right? Because like now everybody's gonna tune in to hear what he said about it. Yeah, but it. they don't need it. They're the number one sports podcast in the world. They, I mean, you can only be number one. You know, it's hilarious to me that everything's a work to Lonzo till it comes to the Kelsey's. Now it's oh, that's organic. No, it's I, a work. I think someone stole it. This is what I think. I think someone stole it. I really do. Either way. Jason, what are you doing? Now, let's be clear. He is not the only one that's had this issue before. Vin Scully, legendary broadcaster for the LA Dodgers, yeah? Um, Vin Scully got a ring as the broadcast play-by-play -play man for the Dodgers from the 1988 World Series rings, uh, or from the World Series of 1988. He lost his ring in a bag of ribs from Costco. Now, as a Costco cost bro, I like I get it. Okay, I get it. I will say this: Do you want recognition for the cost bro thing? Because you looked up like like. like no, I was just things. waiting for you to make a smart ass comment no, about my I, cult that no, I'm in. I, I mean, because if there's one thing I do in my life that is a cult, it's 100 percent the cost bros. Okay. Hey, I was in that for for a little bit of time, and I recognized the problem, and I got out. I, I, there's not a problem. It's perfection personified. All right. It just, it just is. So Vin Scully's done it. it I, I understand the concept, but like how in uh, the world do you not just lose your Super Bowl ring, but you lose your Super Bowl ring in a vat of crappy food? Right. It's one thing if he comes home and is like, y'all, I'm not going to lie. I was going to town last night on some whatever steakhouse steak and potatoes. My ring slipped off. I didn't notice. I don't know where it is now. That's one thing. But you willingly dumped your allegedly dumped your Super Bowl ring into a vat of crap food. And lost a w Super Would Bowl it ring. bother you less if it was better food? I think so. Okay, all right. I think so. I think it would. In a weird way that I can't explain, if he lost his Super Bowl ring into, like, a vat of homemade southern sausage gravy, because that was the game, I'd be like, I get that. That'd be a lot of gravy. I get that. Jason, what do you I've, I've seen the pans. Those pans are pretty big. And the, the amount, I don't know the depth of the chili, but um, the pans were really, really big. 
so I can get why it would be hard to Here's find it. How but that, wait, wait, wait. but when how it's over, I'm going over there and I'm searching through the pans myself and get my ring. How the done. hell does he, knowing his ring's in there, walk away from from that? Let that exactly go anywhere. Exactly. Right. That's got me convinced. It's a podcast. Although, work. although as you would say, they go really hard. So there is a there is a, a possibility that maybe he was not at a level of sobriety to think clearly. Okay, in fairness, that I understand. Yeah, and okay. and especially who I'm talking about, Mister. I took my shirt off at the Super Bowl and was. I mean, that's it's, fair. It's that guy. That's fair. I'll give him credit. I mean, you. I'm assuming you like. Have you seen the Long Baby games? No, um, I I hadn't watched the latest okay. episode, but I knew it was coming now out. I'm gonna go watch because they were they were they've been hyping it yeah. for a while. Because if dude was roasted toasted, then I understand it. And it, I've I've left I've left expensive things at places before. What's this if thing? A of what, what, is, deep. what is this if thing? Yeah, all they talked about is how they're going to get the drink with the college students, which is again. That's why I'm a I'm a I'm a Jason guy. I'm right just there. wondering because I know that they were trying to get Joe Burrow. I don't know if he was actually there. And who knows? Maybe if he was, maybe that's where the ring went. Joey B stole it. All right, we got to run to a break. Which would be hilarious, by when the way. When we come back here in just a minute from right this moment, we've got a few more things that we need to get to on the radio broadcast. We, my dudes and dudettes, are living in a golden era of talent in the National Basketball Association, and yet one man continues to stand out. We will talk about that as the NBA's playing tournament continues. Coming up in 20 minutes, Rashad Beard of the Panther Nation podcast joins us to talk Carolina draft at 920. Fight Club with the great Milonzo, where we talk MMA, professional wrestling, and boxing. That's all coming up on the Rob Brown Show in the Fan Up State. All right, guys, using the restroom. Are you going to? Yeah. yeah. Y'all stay right there. We will be right back. Don't go nowhere.
by the way, Stephen, the uh, the sound of the commercials was in the feed because Rob and I, neither one were speaking, and so there was bleed. The Rob Brown Show continues. It is the fan of state. Talked yesterday about the fact that this year's NBA, as far as I'm concerned, had the most parody from top to bottom that I can remember. Every team, one through 10 in the West, has a possibility of winning. One through eight in the East do. Chicago, Atlanta, neither one of them good enough to win an NBA title. It's certainly a long shot for the teams that are, say, six through 10 in the West. I would say every team one through seven in the East has a pretty good chance of it uh, overall. The most parody the league's ever, ever seen, in my opinion. And a part of the reason for that, in my opinion is because we right now are in a fantastic time in terms of the spread of wealth of talent. I think the pendulum has swung away from the super teams to some degree. And it's not it's not unusual for teams to have a couple of superstars at this point, but you're not really seeing them clump up like they used to. And I'm talking about generational talent you're looking at the second youngest team in the nba the oklahoma city thunder who just grabbed the top seed in the west you're looking at the minnesota timberwolves led by 22 year old anthony edwards on the other end of the spectrum kevin durant steph curry jimmy butler lebron james all in their mid 30s or later at this point the league is phenomenal right now the parity across the league is phenomenal right now And what blows me away about it is that despite the fact that the league is as good as the league has ever been in terms of talent, there are still guys that are going above and beyond. There are still guys that are standing out. And I don't think there is anybody that you can say that about more than LeBron right now. Oh, God, it's a LeBron segment. Yep. Sure is. The dude has taken a team that without LeBron James, as far as I'm concerned, would have been lucky to be a 10 seed. Would have been lucky to sneak into the play-in this year. Can't you, throughout his career, say that about any team he's on, though? Yes. Yes, you can. Except for this time, we're saying about a team that's got him at 39 years of age. 39, 39 years old. Uh, to put that into perspective, great one, uh, I'm 39 years of age. This dude at this point doing what this dude is doing at this point at 39 years of age, I don't care how you feel about him personally or politically or anything else. It is remarkable. I look at the playoff run. I look at him going nose to nose with a fourth year guy like Zion, who, by the way, in that game, play in game number one, the seven, eight game in the West looked like Zion looked like the guy, the Pelicans thought they were getting when they drafted him number one overall four years ago. And all LeBron did was drag that team to yet another win, a win that without him, they're not getting. He dragged them to this spot where they were the eight seed, where they were a good eight seed, where they are now up against the Denver Nuggets. This is part of the reason that I have said, if there's a bet you're going to make in the first round of the playoffs, don't make it that the Lakers get swept because I don't think he's going to let them. The dude is averaging as many assists as he's ever averaged in his career. 
The dude's averaging north of 25 points in his career. You know the list of NBA players that average 25 points? It ain't real long, and he's the oldest guy on it. He's the oldest guy on every list because at 39, he is still one of the best 10 players in the NBA. I don't know what else there is to say about this guy. The And again, I would like to point out that you could make the argument that when LeBron was hitting his prime, when LeBron was turning into LeBron, you could make the argument that the league was not as deep as it had been in years gone by. You could make the argument that because of super teams around the league, the competition level wasn't as good. You basically had to beat like one team in the postseason and you were going to find yourself being discussed as amongst the best. And that's fair. It's really not that way anymore. You've got teams like Minnesota and Oklahoma City that are built around very young future studs, very young current studs, Anthony Edwards, SGA, very good players, and probably guys that are going to be superstars around this league for a long time. And yet, here's a guy 39 years of age that is still out here bringing a Lakers team that if we are looking at it on paper is okay. It's okay. Anthony Davis is a good player. Good player. Outside of him, what are you looking at? Austin Reeves. I like Austin Reeves a lot. Austin Reeves is a hustle monster. Austin Reeves is a guy whose game thrives when there is another superstar to take attention away from him. And in this case, it really is Anthony Davis because Austin Reeves' point total goes up about five per game in the games that LeBron James has not played in. But to me, that's because the focus shifts inside to Anthony Davis, which means the floor is more open for Austin Reeves. But if Austin Reeves doesn't have an Anthony Davis in there, he's not taken over as a superstar. So, so who's the guy? There's not one. There's not one. And, and so we're clear. You can say this about a lot of guys on a lot of other teams. You can say it about Kevin Durant. You can say it eh, probably not about Jason Tatum or Jalen Brown, but maybe. You can say it about SGA. You can say it about Anthony Edwards. You can say it about a lot of guys. The difference between all those guys is young in their prime versus 39 years of age. And the guy is still cranking out top caliber basketball. What do you want? And this is, by the way, coming from a guy whose team he just probably bounced from the playoffs in its entirety. When we come back, Rashad Beard, host of the Panther Nation podcast, joins us. Texter said, Rob, you've mentioned OKC three times and you've not said Chet Holmgren, WTF. You are absolutely correct. I should mention guy who would have won rookie of the year in a year that Victor Wembeyama is not a rookie. You're absolutely correct. That's my bad. Still a rookie. Still versus a 39-year-old. My point stands. Rashad Beard of the Panther Nation podcast next on the Rob Brown Show in the Fan Up State. I did itch under my hat that whole second. That was her. Today, the Tar Heels take on NC State. Clemson battles Pitt. East Carolina squares off with Wichita State. Wake Forest battles Florida State. UNC Green That's not true, James. <laughs> and if it were true, you're blaming people for wanting to go where it's warm? As a uh, as a Pelicans fan, my guy, yes, I get it. I, I spent years listening to when Anthony Davis becomes a Laker, and now I've spent years listening to when Zion's – I would add the Knicks to that, when Zion's ready to become a Nick. Except no one actually goes to the Knicks, so there's that. I mean, they're going to now because the Knicks are good. 
Yeah, but how good are they? Are they good enough to actually I do anything? Think, I think you think so? I think they can take Philly to seven. What about the Celtics, though? I, you know, I was on Bet MGM tonight, and they asked me who my pick was out of this, out of the East. And I said, honestly, if you're asking me from a betting perspective, the 76ers are the value, not the Celtics. And uh, uh, Ryan Horvat was like, I don't know, man, like they're the Celtics, the record, the number two defense, blah, blah, blah. And I said, in this like four years in a row that they've been the number yeah. one team and everything, and then they never win, like, so, why are you falling? Maybe for longer than four years. I mean, they've been in the conversation for a really long time and haven't done a thing. I said, why are you falling for it again? And Ryan Horvat went, I don't know. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, I think that's, I think that's all I need to point out. Guess it's just an old habit, I suppose. Quit being a, a troublemaker, James. Giannis is not going to Golden State. Golden State's probably going to make the mistake of trying to hang on to everybody for one more year and then realizing that they probably shouldn't have done that. I don't think they can, honestly. The team's not getting better. Rashad has been here for a yeah, while. Yeah, no, I know. My computer's off right now. Yeah, we'll just wonder how that happened. I don't know. <laughs> Your pin drops are very precise, though. They I, are. I mean, you, they are. It's uh, and you can't do that on. I, I mean, on a consistent basis like you do, and and not be like has to directly get out and hit that button. Rashad Beer, what's up, big fella? What's going on, guys? How you doing, buddy? Feeling better? Good, good. Hanging in there. Yeah, love that. And stuff better. is rough, isn't it? Yeah, Had me tough. out for like two a couple days too. So yeah, it's tough. Tough, but I'm I'm good. I'm good. Much better than I was. Didn't want to come coughing all through your audio broadcast, you know. You know what I mean? We appreciate it. <laughs> the Rob Brown Show can't result. It is the fan upstate. Rob Brown, the great Milonzo with you on a Thursday morning. And at this time. Uh, on Thursday mornings, you know, we talk a little Carolina Panther football, and we do so with our friend of the radio broadcast. He is one half of the Panther Nation podcast, which you can find on Twitter at Panther Nation PC. More importantly, go to YouTube, search Panther Nation podcast, hit that subscribe button, hit that bell, because they go live all the time with some of the best Panther content you're going to find anywhere our guy, Rashad Beard, after a two-week hiatus where he played hooky on us last week, pretending to be sleep, uh, pretending to be sick so he could get some more sleep. He's back. What's up, big dog? What's going on, man? Good to be back. I miss you guys, man. Uh, shout out to all the PMP family in the chat as well, man. Shout out to those guys. Did you get the uh, you got the old hey, welcome to spring in the Carolinas. Your uh, your face hurts for a couple of days now. Yeah, yeah, no, I went on a cruise uh, and came back sick. You know, what I mean, I was on a, on a boat with a lot of people, so came back with something, and it took me took me down. But I'm back. I'm good. Back so like I'm I never a, left. I, I, I'm a I'm a crew. I love a cruise. All right, I love. It. I get on the boat. I put my bag like with the people, and then I'm just done with responsibility for a week. To the point that I am willing to jump into that cesspool of gross people because yeah. that's how much I love it. Like halfway through the cruise, where you're looking around the boat, like, oh, I am in trouble now. Yeah, no, I, I'm. I'm usually I don't get sick very often, uh, but when I do, I get I, I get taken down. Uh, but I don't. I didn't expect to get sick. I was good throughout the entire cruise, and then it, when I got back home is when I it hit me. So um, I was good. So you know, so it happens. It is what it is, man. Rashad Beard from the Panther Nation podcast joining us here on the Rob Brown Show and the Fan of Stay. All right, dude, I got some specifics we want to get into as we are now one week away from the start of the NFL draft. But I'll leave the first one open ended for you. What's your thoughts, man? Where we at? Where we are with your draft prep, with your thoughts on the two second rounders, like just your overall yeah. thoughts a week out. Yeah, no, I feel good. Um, I've been really deep into this. One thing about being sick, I had a lot of time to kind of dive into some film, 
looking at some prospects, man, and it's it, I think the Panthers are in a really good spot. I think being at the top of the second round, there's some trade opportunities that you could explore if they're you know the, a team is thirsty enough. Um, you know, you can get a nice little package of picks. You know, you go, you know, get more picks, more swing at the bat. You know what I mean? So you never you never know, man. I, I don't know what's going to happen. Um, I think we're going to have a lot an opportunity at the top of the second round at, to grab two solid contributors, two starting caliber players um, if they decide to stay with those picks. And I like it. I, I'm, I don't know, man. I don't know where they're going to go. I'm, I'm looking at these visits, a lot of wide receivers, obviously. So we know we're going to get a wide receiver somewhere. Um, you know, running back is a, a very surprising position that we're are you spending a lot of visits on. Um, so I'm, I'm excited about it, man. I have no clue. This is a new regime, new draft strategy. Uh, so I'm excited to see what they're going to do. Um, are they going to trade back? Are they going to stay where they are? Are they going to trade up? I don't know. We got to we got to watch everything. You got to watch day one, too, because you never know what's going to happen with the Panthers. So let's dive into the heavy part, which is because you brought it up. I've heard it brought up a couple of places. The thought that there's a chance to package up the two number twos and jump back up into the first round. And obviously we got to see what other trades are out there. There's thoughts that Arizona might trade back. There's thoughts that Minnesota might be looking to move. There's a lot of teams that can move around to the first round. And obviously that's going to impact the value that Carolina has with those two first rounders. So instead of looking at it from that angle, Rashad, let's look at if you're going to jump up into the first round, give me a list of guys that you would consider worth it. Cause I got one, but it's not super long. And I'm worried that the guys that are on this list are at a position that is super deep. Yeah. Um, I don't know that. I don't know that I'm going to be interested in trading up uh, just because I don't know, man, that, that fifth year option is very valuable. Uh, you talk about that getting back in the first round and getting a, a fifth year option. But if I'm going to do it, um, man, there's a couple of names. Uh, Brian Thomas Jr. Is one from LSU that I would consider. Uh, I don't know that lad. I don't know that I trade up for lad again. Like you just mentioned, the, the wide receiver class is so deep. I don't know that I would trade up for a wide receiver per se. If you're gonna look defensively, I, I may <clears throat> excuse me. I may trade up uh, for Darius Robinson. Um, edge is not that deep, so that's one I may look at. But I don't know, man. I, I, I'm I don't know that I trade up. I, I think that I would stay where we're at and kind of see see how the chips fall because there's always a guy. There's always one receiver or one name that falls to that second round that somebody's going to want. And it's going to give you the opportunity to either trade back or take said player. So I, I think the Panthers should take the patient approach and just see what falls to them. This draft to me, Rashad is, is super interesting because there is a lot of potential movement. I don't know when the runs start. I absolutely think there's going to be a wide receiver run. I also think there could be a wide receiver run and still leave one of those guys available at 33. Uh, the problem to me is going to end up being an edge rusher because I think it's a super valuable position this year. There's a lot of teams looking for him, and there are some good ones out there, but it's not nearly as deep as wide receiver. I think if the, the, the or to me, the problem is if you're going to jump up to get a first round edge rusher, you pretty much take away your opportunity to get a wide receiver. And if you're going to take a wide receiver, you jumping up into the first round, I think you might end up overplaying your hand a little bit because I think some of those guys are available. Man, it's a real thin line Dan Morgan's got yeah. to operate on here. And not only that, I mean, you, you talk about edge rusher. I think and we took a poll uh, on our show uh, on Tuesday talking about the biggest need on the roster. A lot of us think that the cornerback is a position of need, a bigger position of need than edge rusher. So there's there's some needs that we need to check. And um, you, you're not going to be able to check all the boxes. So uh, I don't know. I, I maybe we trade back. Maybe we sit stand sit there at, at 33 and see what's there. And if there's six seven guys that we want, you know, you, you trade back and try to pick up another third or fourth. See what you can do there. But you're right. I mean, edge rusher is very very thin. Um, you're talking after Darius Robinson, Chop Robinson, uh, Jared Verse. After those guys are gone, man, it gets real thin. Um, and and luckily, I think we need a rotational guy. Um, I'm not I don't think we need a day one starter at edge rusher because we have a clowny, uh, because we have a Wanham. I think we could survive the year without a day one edge rusher. Uh, but we do need some rotational guys. We have athletes. We don't necessarily have uh, a guy that's going to go out there and change the game yet. So um, I, I don't know, man. Uh, I, it's it's a, there's a lot of holes on this roster that we got to check. And uh, and I got to be honest, another name out there that, it, that, that we're, if he's sitting there at 33, 
Um, my man JPJ, Jackson Powers Johnson, I have a hard time, a hard time passing him up as well because we, we're sitting here with Corbett as our starting center who hasn't played uh, a full season in two years. So uh, uh, there's a lot of ways you can go, a lot of ways to get in the cat here. This is interesting to me because obviously we've had a we've had a handful of text and, and tweets to the show uh, here on the Rob Brown show and the fan upstate from folks that are going, all right, Rob, who are we picking, who we ended up with? And the answer is I got no damn idea. I can give you a list of the guys I think are on that spot, Rashad, but I, I don't I know this is true of every team every year, but it's more intense this year. I have not been able to come up with a situation for your team or mine over the past handful of years where it feels like your first pick is so fluid. It, there, there's a thousand things. It's it's other teams move in. It's where the runs are. It's depth of quality. Because again, yeah, cornerback. I agree with you. That's a neat. I also think there's a couple of cornerbacks that like feel like they're game changers out of the gate. And you got to give up two picks to go. Two picks probably plus another one somewhere down the line to go get that guy versus rolling the dice on two wide receivers in the second round or a wide receiver and a cornerback that maybe doesn't have immediate star caliber quality, but you can trade. I, I honestly, dude, I don't know what the attack is here. I hate to say it, but if you're a fan, I think you got to take the in Dan, we trust methodology next Thursday night. I mean, we don't have much of a choice. I mean, we've got to sit back and watch the show. And um, I listen, one thing's for sure. We're going to take a wide receiver. I can, I can assure that, uh, that I do know. Um, we, we, we're, we need some help at wide receiver. You know, we've got an aging Adam Thielen, um, Deontay Johnson, who we, who we think is going to be great is only here for one year, right? We've got to extend him if we're going to keep him on the roster. So we've, we've had like, I don't know, 11, 12 visits, uh, with wide receivers. So one thing is for certain, we're going to take a wide receiver where, um, one is leaning towards going to be in the second round. One of those picks is going to be most likely on a wide receiver. So I'm excited, man, between Xavier Worthy. Uh, Lad Johnson, uh, Xavier Leggett. There's a lot of good talent out there. I hope we grab one of them and everything else from there. Who knows what's going to happen? We have we have some boxes to check. There is some needs: uh, interior offensive lineman, edge rusher, cornerback. Um, we've got to get those. We got to get those positions checked. But luckily, we have a lot of picks, and we'll see uh, what Dan Morgan uh, decides to do. I'm excited about it. Let me give you a guy I've been on a on a on a pendulum back and forth and it's it's lab mcconkey right because oh yeah and initially it was now nah, i'm not really interested you're just you're just grabbing adam thielen jr adam thielen volume 2.0 then i thought well i mean adam thielen's aging if he's going to be a big part of the offense it'd be nice when he does age out or leave to just swing the young adam thielen in there maybe it's really not a bad pick now i've kind of come back around to hey you got deontay for a single year if he does have a great year and somebody else is going to pay him to get him up out of charlotte I need that next guy on the roster. I don't want to go back-to-back wide receivers if I don't have to. And that ain't Lad McConkey, who is Adam Thielen, volume 2.0. I, I like. There's half of me that thinks that would be a great pick at probably 39, maybe 33, if he's the best receiver on the board. And there's part of me that goes, look, if there's a deep run and you start seeing the, 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 the Xavier's coming off the board earlier than you expected, now I'm trading up to get a premium guy because he's not a one. And as much as I think you've got your one in Deontay, you got to find the one of the future right now. Am I getting too aggressive here? Uh, I don't know that I'm, I'm trading up because I think there's some other options, but I do love lad. I'm a lad guy too. Uh, I think you know comparing with Thielen is uh, I don't it's it's a I gotta be honest Rob that's a bit lazy. Uh, are you comparing him to Adam Thielen because he's white? No, is that what, I'm is not. That what we're doing? I'm not. Rashad, <laughs> why would you do this to me? I thought we were I'm, friends, dog. I I'm just we were asking. Friends. I'm saying because he's a built slot receiver. All right. Looks like you hit a little close look, to home. Look at look at him defending let you, himself. Let me tell you what I did for years. All right, for years I did. Look this. how red his face is. I said I said touchdown Tommy Brady. I like watching him play because he could turn any short white guy into a Pro Bowl. I'm not above the white guy wide receiver jokes, Rashad. I'm good with it. All right. I'm saying because he's a slot receiver. I take my Panther football very seriously here, Rashad. He's a I, slot <laughs> wide receiver. Do you disagree? I do disagree. I think he's an outside guy. I think he plays. Um, he has played 76 percent of his uh, plays at Georgia outside. Uh, so I think he is an outside guy that can go inside, which is what the Panthers are looking for. I do think they need a guy uh, that can play all over the field. And Lad, it can win everywhere. He's a route runner. He's got speed. He's good in the open field. I think Lad is a complete receiver, and he's the type of receiver we need 
on this squad. He is the type of guy that we need. We've we've done the big bodies. We we played. We've done Mingo. We've done K, uh, Kelvin Benjamin. We've done. We played those games. So all these people that fall in love with 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 Leggett, I, th- that's all great. We've done that before. Let's get a pure route runner, a guy that can win, win with speed, win with route running, win inside and outside, and that's Lad McConkey. So I love Lad. I think he is. Probably the only concern about him is the fact that he does have some injury concerns. Doesn't doesn't have the most he doesn't have the most production. Obviously, play with a lot of guys out in Georgia. Uh, there's a, a lot of footballs to spread around. So you know, I, I think he hasn't quite reached his peak yet. And I think Lad again is exactly what the Carolina Panthers need, okay. and he can provide that number one of the future, like you said. If we decide to move on from Johnson, okay, you're winning. You're winning me over. I'm moving back your direction. Is he a boom or bust guy? No, I don't. Not at all. I don't think he's a boom or bust guy because I think. I think worst case or best case scenario, he's number one. Worst case scenario, like you said, you move him to the slot, he wins, and what he's wide receiver three. I don't think his his floor is low to me, or his ceiling, his ceiling is low to me. I think he uh, he's very 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 good. I think Lad is going to be a very good guy for sure. Let me, let me give you one more name, and I, I, I I'm I'm pandering here. All right, to the folks down here in South Carolina, that'll be great, man. Xavier Leggett. <laughs> Leggett. No, I, I like Leggett. I do like Leggett. Um, I, I, I like Leggett a lot. Uh, I think that he needs another development year. Uh, I don't think he's quite plug and play like Lad is. I think that we haven't seen the best of Leggett. And uh, I think that, you know, he had the one year production. Obviously, there's reasons behind that. We don't have to get into to everything in his history. You know, we dealt, he's dealt with a lot personally. So I, I feel like um, we haven't quite seen the consistency out of Leggett yet. And I think he's a very he's very good. I don't think people should limit him to the Mingo uh, comparisons and like that. I think he's a very very good receiver. Has a I think his ceiling could be higher uh, than Lads. I think he has a he's boomer bust right. I think he's a more boomer bust um, product than Lad is. But I, I got to go with the sure thing, and I, I take Lad over Xavier Leggett personally. I like it. I like it. Rashad Beard here on the Rob Brown Show joins us every Thursday to talk Carolina Panther football a week out from the NFL draft. Next time we talk to Rashad, we might see some trades up and down the draft order. We not, we might not. We'll find out. Big dog, good to have you back, buddy. Appreciate it. I'm going to go study some more film on some white wide receivers. You jerk. Hey, go lad. Hey, listen. <laughs> hey, lad is great. Go watch some more film on lad for sure. He's, he's a good, good wide receiver. Rashad Don't Beard. Don't in the slot. He's better than the slot. Find them on YouTube at Panther Nation Podcast or on Twitter at Panther Nation PC. Feel better, big dog. We'll talk to you next week for draft day. All right, good. I appreciate you guys. You know it. Rashad Beard from the Panther Nation Podcast putting me on blast for absolutely no damn reason at all. Well, there, was, there was definitely None. a reason. There was a reason. Golly. It's going to make an awesome promo, though. Oh, yay. Can't wait. Clip it up. Clip Sean it up. Beard is uh, joining us next Thursday on draft day. Lonzo is doing a sports flash right now. I don't know. I don't know if I can do this. Atlanta Braves finished off a sweep of the Houston Astros yesterday with a five four win in extra innings. The Braves notched two in the eighth after a throw in error scored Michael Harris. The second, the win moves Atlanta to 12 and five on the year and drops Houston to just six and 14. That's, that's, Bad. It's not good. Uh, speaking of not good, the Atlanta Hawks season came to its conclusion last night with the loss to the Chicago Bulls, 131 to 116. Clint Capella, Trey Young, Bogdan Bogdanovich, and Deontay Murray combined for 95, while the rest of the team was responsible for 21 total. Kobe White notched 42 for the Bulls, while Nikola Vucevic and DeMar DeRozan scored 24 and 22 respectively. Tune in this afternoon from 3 to 7 p.m. for our brand new local show, Wire to Wire. Cole Bryson and Diesel get you up to date on the latest local and national sports news. Great guests, great debate, and a whole lot of fun. And it's all Wire to Wire. Yay, the jam cam is back. Woo! He said jam cam. It's my favorite. Rob obviously left the room because he needed to go recover from getting burned. Go to get some aloe, some sort of ointment, you know.
Dr. Mitchell Scheinkamp. Dr. Scheinkamp is a pioneer in this field with 20 years of clinical work, tons of research, teaching, and publishing, and he wants you to get relief with a needle, not a knife. Call QC Genetics now to learn more about some exciting options. This is a revolutionary approach that can get you long-term relief with no downtime. Call QC Genetics for a free consultation, 864-448-3772. In Greenville and in Asheville, 864-448-3772, 864-448-3772. Hey, this is Diesel from 90. 3.3 The Planet and the Fan Upstate. Got old, scratched, or dented rims on your ride? Let r and Tire Express in Greenville, Spartanburg, or Anderson get you looking right. And right now, during tax season, is the perfect time. If your rims are in good shape, or the tires wrapped around them are making a lot of noise, or worse yet, so old you're afraid they might leave you stranded, it's time. r and Tire Express has a huge line of tires and wheels for your car, truck, or off-roader. They took care of me, they'll take care of you. r and Tires.com. The all-new 2024 Upstate Craft Beer Passport is here for just 40 bucks at UpstateCraftBeerPassport.com. 20 breweries and two bonus stops with free tastings and tours. Breweries include New Grove Artisan Brewery and Peach City Brewing. Visit UpstateBeerPassport.com and paid for by AG Marketing Group. Attention timeshare owners. If you need to get rid of your timeshare for any reason, please listen to the following message. Getting out of a timeshare commitment is not easy, and it takes time. But we specialize in helping consumers legally get rid of their expensive timeshares forever. Can't get the vacation dates that work for you? Maybe you felt taken advantage of or forced into the timeshare? Maybe you just can't continue to shoulder those monthly payments any longer. If you need to eliminate your timeshare commitment, then you need to take down this number. 800-858-0815. We will safely and legally get rid of your timeshare payments forever. All with a 100% satisfaction guarantee. Don't continue to let your timeshare be a financial burden to you and your loved ones. All right. 800-858-0815. The call is free. The consultation is free. Call 800-858-0815. I, uh, That's 800-858-0815. I like that. He just, as a, as a six-footer, translates to a slot receiver to me at the next level. But I'll go back and I'll rewatch some games. So apparently, you're like the only one who apparently thinks that. Apparently so. I just read him as a, as a, as a slot receiver. Maybe not. Excel and Burton. I actually don't hate that combination, to be honest with you. Do you want to know what song it was that got us booted in Russia? I am a real American. You're right. But Russia, Russia took us off the radio for I am a real American. Screw you, Russia. <laughs> That's all my country. Yeah. Hey, Russia. Suck it, Russia. Never been so proud of this show in my life. We can both sing better than that, but you know, eh, it worked whatever. Better that way. Whatever. It worked better that way. Russia doesn't deserve our best. Not at all. Suck it, Putin. <laughs> And away we go with the final hour of the Rob Brown Radio Program hey, Big Daddy, how you doing? right here on the Fan Upstate. Real good, Corey LaJoy. Thanks for checking, bud. 
Hey, speaking of Corey LaJoy, the boys in NASCAR are spinning circles. Talladega, Alabama coming up this weekend. Corey LaJoy's top 10 finishes have exclusively come at super speedways, at drafting tracks. My guy's got a shot. Spire has been putting up top 10s recently. In fact, a couple of top 10s over the past few weeks. They have got some momentum, and now they go to a track where Corey LaJoy has gotten his best finishes so far. Don't be shocked if you see my dude land a top five this weekend. In fact, I will probably throw some coin at Corey LaJoy to score a top 10 finish this weekend. Uh, Carson Hosevar, uh, who you will all remember from story time with Rob Brown, baby, a couple of weeks ago, uh, was the one that uh, laughed hysterically at me for my ability, inability to get my fat behind into a stock car. Pretty incredible moment in my life to humiliate myself in front of multiple NASCAR you, Cups. You are drivers. going back eventually. When you lose the weight that you're trying to lose, you're going back and giving it another shot, right? Dude, I am going to call the Spire guys and be like, listen, I would like to come back to the garage. And they're going to be like, oh, you, Julia, would you like to take the tour? And I will say, no, I would not like to take the tour. I've already taken the tour. The tour was incredible. I just want to get into that damn car. That's all. That's all. I just want to get my hopefully less fat behind into that car. Please and thank you. Hey, we got an hour uh, of radio left to do here on the show. If you'd like to be a part of it, the renewal by Anderson of the Carolinas fan phone is available for you right now at 844-326-3663. You can text us at 713077-7307 on the text line. Start your text with fan, F-A-N, fan, F-A-N, and we will read them on the radio broadcast. You can get at us on Twitter, at The Rob Brown Show, at The Rob Brown Show, at Lonzo Onward, at Lonzo Onward. Get to everybody at The Fan Upstate if you want to come at us uh, in that direction. You are welcome to do it. All the different ways for you to get in touch with the radio broadcast. The transfer portal in collegiate sports opened up on Tuesday. We have seen some names that have gone into the portal, some surprises, some not so surprises. Shane Beamer has made it known who he's keeping an eye on in the transfer portal. Wide receivers and offensive line, which is, Exactly where it was that Shane Beamer's team struggled last year. We played the sound for you yesterday from one Robert Griffin III, who said that he, and I agree with him, believes that Spencer Rattler has the potential to be the steal of the draft this year. Said, hey, look at this guy. What can he do? He's got a big arm. He makes all the throws. He's got good legs under him. And on top of that, the growth and maturity of one Spencer Rattler uh, has to be discussed. And I think he's right. I pointed out that you can go back and you can crack on the way that he left the University of Oklahoma. And based on the conversation, the text we were getting from some of y'all back in the first hour of the show when we were talking about the transfer portal, many of you are going to say that he is soft and he is uh, not tough and he's not a leader and he didn't earn it and yada, yada, yada. Uh, I disagree with uh, all of that vehemently. Nuance is important to every conversation in sports and looking at the situation in Oklahoma, if you are saying that about Spencer Rattler, a guy who is being labeled as a potential steal of the draft, a top 10 available quarterback prospect at the National Football League level, your philosophy would have had him staying at Oklahoma doing nothing there and probably not growing into a top 10 NFL draft pick down the line. So I'm 100% good with him leaving. And then when he got to Columbia, as I asked the great one yesterday on the show, can any of you point to 
an issue with Spencer Rattler in Columbia? Was that guy anything other than a model player during his couple of years at South Carolina? I can't. If Spencer Rattler would have come out halfway through last year and gone, I can't do anything else. The offensive line sucks. You might have gone, eh, it's a little harsh to your teammates there, Spence. But you would have had to follow that up with the take of, eh, he's right, though. But he didn't do that. He went out there. He grinded, as the kids say. He went out there. He busted it up. I have talked to plenty of people that had the opportunity to meet and converse with Spence, and he has never been described to me as anything other than a stellar dude. As a matter of fact, we have a listener right here in the upstate uh, that I know personally who is very fond of Spence because they took their kid to a game last year. And their kid was very excited to give Spence a friendship bracelet. Courtesy of one Tay Tay Taylor Swift. Gave Spence a friendship bracelet and then noticed during the game later that day that Spence was wearing that bracelet while he played on the football field. And in the press conference after and days after that bracelet was still on. Now, that's a relatively insignificant thing if we're being honest not to a kid it's not not to a future gamecock it's not that's a that's a life-changingly cool thing for a guy to do and that just seems to be who that guy was it just seems to be who he was so all the talk about a lack of maturity which i think was absolutely fair to label him with during his time in norman oklahoma Apparently, he grew up during his two years with Shane Beamer in Columbia, South Carolina. And that has got the attention of many an NFL scout. Blah, 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 back to the beginning of the conversation. Part of the reason that folks at the next level are looking at Spencer Rattler and going, hey, this guy might be a guy is because he played behind a, let's call it what it was, pretty, is it fair to say average offensive line? That's kind of being nice. Yeah, I think it is. I think it is. I think saying it was an average offensive line is about the most polite way that I can describe what he played behind last year. It was factually bad. And yet he went out there and put up more than respectable numbers, if we're being honest. More than respectable numbers. That has to be fixed. That has to be fixed. There's a couple of things that need to be fixed. One of the things that needs to be fixed that my uh, comrade, colleague, uh, former co-worker Mark Ryan loved to point out, and I honestly don't think it's unfair is that this team doesn't exactly have an identity yet. But one of the problems in establishing an identity as a run team, as a pass team, as an option team, as a whatever team, is that you've got to have the talent to, to, to do that. Whether you want to be run first, pass first, option first, whatever, you've got to have the talent to pull it off. And that starts across the offensive line. They just didn't have it last year. If you want to utilize the arm of Lenora Sellers, which we did get the opportunity a couple of times to see in, uh, in Living Color last year, You've got to have somebody for him to throw the ball to. Unfortunately, last year, uh, due to, in large part, circumstances outside of your control, with the exception of Xavier Leggett, uh, the, the, the wide receiver core last year, it kind of fell apart on you a little bit, right? 
it kind of fell apart on you a little bit and it created a world that you really didn't have the guys to get the ball to. So Shane Beamer deciding that he is going to work the portal and begin working the portal by looking for wide receivers and offensive linemen. Honestly, it's kind of a responsibility at this point. It's also not a surprise. He's an early adopter of that. When he first got there, he was use, he had he was forced to use the transfer portal uh, because of lack of the kind of recruit that he wanted to play there. So, I mean, it's not unusual for him to do this. I agree. We haven't seen great success with it yet, but it's not unusual for him to do it that way. It's not only not unusual, because you are correct. It's not unusual. This time, it feels mandatory to me. I feel like doing anything else uh, would, 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 would be damn near dereliction of duty if we're keeping it a buck. That's, that would be a real bad way to handle it. Plus, recruiting is it's it's awesome and everything, but right now it's more about transfer portal anyway, just in a lot of places and maybe just about everywhere. I I I I can't push back on that. I can't push back on that. I don't want to push back on that. I have said a couple of times the transfer portal is officially a part of the responsibilities of a head coach at this point. If a head coach is not working the portal to grow the talent of his football team, then he's a bad coach. And I, I'm, I'm, I'm willing to throw that at anybody. If your coach is not working the portal to fix the issues of any one given team, then your coach is not doing his job. And I don't particularly care how that coach feels about the portal. You might hate it. But if you're not using it, you're not doing your job. So for Shane Beamer to outright admit, hey, yo, we're going, not just that we go into the portal, but we have specific targets. It is his responsibility at this point. Do I want it fixed with recruiting? Yeah, of course I do. Of course I need your recruiting to stay good. Of course, I need you to continue to put in the work of recruiting. As, as we talked about earlier in the show, when we talked about the NIL regulation changes, and some of you guys started immediately in with the, well, you know, how, how, do, you, how do you roster build? How do you make sure that you've got consistency? I want to be able to follow guys through their career and see their growth. And my response to you was, well, then recruit guys who want to be there. That is a facet of the recruitment. When you are recruiting a player, you are not just recruiting a wide receiver. You are recruiting a wide receiver who fits your program. Play style, personality-wise, character, whatever the case might be. And that's different from coach to coach, and it's different from team to team. But I'm going to say, to some degree, the portal's got to be operated the same way. It needs to be something that you don't just have a, 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 an emphasis on. You have a responsibility to the team to use it. Now, I'm not saying that if you're anti-portal, you're obligated to use it. If you're an anti-portal guy and you think it's bad for football, all I'm saying is, you're not going to be able to build the best possible team out of that, are you? So you're not going to do the thing, well, Dabo cannot win if he doesn't get in the portal and get with the program and get into modern era. Oh, no, I absolutely am saying that. I absolutely am saying that. I, I Now, I think Dabo refuses to use the portal is a bit of hyperbole. I think it's a little bit exaggerated because he has used the portal. He's very selective about it for sure. I absolutely think any coach, and by the way, this isn't just about him. I think that any coach out there that refuses to use the portal is making their job more difficult, is making their life more difficult, and is 
I'm not going to say preventing them from, but is hampering their odds of being successful. Could you imagine the, the, the inverse of that? If there was a college football coach who went, I'm not recruiting high school kids anymore. I am building rosters exclusively out of the portal. You'd look at that guy and go, you lunatic. What are you talking about? You can't do that. It's kind of the same thing, just the inverse of that. I think you kind of have to use the portal. I don't think, because no is a very strong word. I don't think you can win if you're not utilizing the portal. Now, that's not to say you've got to go bananas and just get everybody you can get out of it. I think you can treat the portal the exact same way that you treat recruiting. I want to find guys that fit my program, fit my culture, fit my already in place roster. We're going to, we're going to find out there's, there's some major examples of this this year, including Alabama lost a lot of guys when Nick Saban left. And quite a few of those guys went to Ohio state I'm watching the spring game. A lot. There are a lot of transfer guys there more so than I ever remember. And maybe they're just pointing it out more this year than they have in the past, but we're going to, we're going to find out how effective that can be in one of the bigger schools. I got news for you. You already did. Florida state went 13 and 0 last year. That was a portal team. Yeah, but they didn't make the playoff. They did. So. They should have, but they didn't, but they put themselves in a position to, they did everything that they could do to make the playoff and they did it. As a portal team, you don't need to sit around and wait and find out how that's going to work for a major program. You already know we've already had a ton of controversial conversation about it. It does work. It will work. It will continue to work. This is why I've said there is some level of responsibility for a coach to do this. So Shano saying, I'm going into the portal. I'm looking wide receiver. I'm looking offensive line. Good. That's what got you beat last year. That's what killed you last year. You need to do it. Yo, when we come back, I don't know why I said yo right there. I already have your attention. I yo, think. yo, 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 yo. When we come back, we are three weeks deep into the Major League Baseball season. The Atlanta Bravos got a sweep over the Houston Astros last night. When we come back, nope. MLB nope. power rankings. Nope. Three weeks into the season. We're going to take a look no, at not. who is performing and who is not after we do Fight Club next on the Rob Brown Show. I said it like nine times today. I want my power rankings. I'll do one through five, then with the X. The Rob Brown Show's on your radio. It's the fan upstate. Five picks. All right, guys, quick live read, and we're coming right back. Do me a favor, stay right there.
Welcome into the Fight Club, where when the host decides they want to talk baseball, we say, no, we ain't doing that. We're talking Fight Club. That's what we're doing. And the host is like, yeah, yeah, that's that's what we're doing. Yo. Light him up. Light his ass up. All right, some things to get to, including there is a pay-per-view this weekend for AEW. We're going to break that down, and it will be for Nerf Wall because you guys want it. I want it. We all want it. We want Rob on that wall, and he's just too stinking good to be on that wall. But he's going to slip up someday. It's going to happen. Someone's going to do just a little bit better than him, and then he's going to be on the wall. The problem is everybody's got to do yeah, a little do. Bit better than me. they do. And so far, not even close. Not even close. What I missed between the entire WrestleMania weekend, I missed two matches. You missed two. And one of yeah. them, I said on the air, I think this is going to be a wrong pick, but it's my sentimental pick, which was Gunther. Yeah, the, Sam, the Sammy. We knew Sammy was yeah. winning that thing. Yeah, that, it was like minus four hundred. But I was riding with the friend of the show in that case. I, I can't blame you there. And uh, unfortunately, we haven't seen him since. Who knows? Maybe he just wanted some time off, or he's so ashamed that he lost to that guy that he has to go away and reevaluate. But he'll come back strong and hopefully be in the uh, main title picture. Couple of things before we get to AEW. Rhea Ripley has given up her belt. There is an outcry across the the wrestling Me, across my house. Yeah, across across the wrestling world. People are wondering and yelling and screaming and wanting an explanation as to why Rhea Ripley had to give up her belt when you know someone like Seth when he got hurt they just rode around it till he could get back in time for WrestleMania or someone like Roman Reigns who only wrestles once every couple months. Although that's already been explained. It's in his contract. I don't even think that's a work. I think that's actually in his contract. Good for him. But the, the Seth Rollins thing and, and some other times we have seen belts, uh, the people get to hold on to them, but Rhea is right away giving up her belt. Do you have a problem with that? I don't. It's from what I understand, it's an injury that is going to require months on the shelf. It is one thing for Seth, who we knew was going to be out for like a month and a half, two months top end. From what I understand, you're looking at like four plus months for Rhea Ripley. The story around the bloodline could justify Roman being out for X amount of weeks. The story around Seth's belt could justify him being out for three to five weeks, not four to six months. Listen, I'm as big of a Rhea Ripley fan as you're going to find anywhere. Yeah, she's got a vacation. He's de he definitely is, without a doubt. Uh, he wants to fight over over Rhea Ripley when when I say disparaging things. I know it's hard, hard to believe I would say something that would make him want to fight. Be better. Uh, Chad Gable, turn heel. And just, I've never seen this happen before. Snatch Sammy out of his wife's arms to turn heel. What a move that was. Uh, you, I bet you saw the writing on the wall in this one, right? Like you saw that coming. You can't, it's, it's, you, I don't know do, what this means for the rest of the academy, though. You can do, uh, two baby faces with characters like this, but usually when you go baby face, baby face, it's like a one-off thing. It's like a one match thing. It's usually like a handshake. You've earned this shot, which is kind of the story they let into there. But in this case, you, you, you had to see, especially with that promo, he cut early in raw where he said, you know, he showed me his weaknesses. That's a heel line. That's not a thing a face says. Absolutely. That's a heel line without a doubt. Uh, but still, Snatching him out of his wife's arms. That was a that was a good move. It really was. They they're doing a lot of things camera wise. By the way, one of the best entrances ever, exit entrance because Jay Uso walks out and there's Sammy looking up at the arena, talking about what the arena means to him, and then Sammy goes in. Uh, camera angles, which are now being copied a little bit on AEW, which I don't blame them. I'm not not doing it. I can't believe they can't do their own camera. No, this stuff is working. So when you see something's working, just like when you find out a certain offense is effective, then everyone suddenly has that offense. It's the same sort of thing. Joe on stream said, did you all see Roby Soho's surprise announcement after Dynamite last night? She's legit pregnant, and Angelo Parker is the father. Yeah, you remember when Mae Young was pregnant? That was legit, right? <laughs> that was absolutely legit, legit yeah, was, and not a work. Listen. Uh, we were having this conversation yesterday on Twitter. Uh, I've got a, a, a buddy of mine who produces a, a, a pretty large nationally known wrestling podcast, and we were going back and forth. Uh, 
there are there's a pendulum that swings back and forth. Half the time that I'm embarrassed to be a wrestling fan, it's because of other wrestling fans. Cause there's some gross people out there that like what I love. And then the other half of the time is like when they do things like may got pregnant by Mark Henry and gave birth to a hand. And then I'm like, I guys, what am, like it can be funny, goofy, but come the hell on. Well, I hope this isn't a work. I hope they, that she's legitimately pregnant and that they love each other and, and all that stuff. That would be, that would be awesome. But because of may young, it's forever tainted. When someone says they're pregnant, I don't necessarily believe it. <laughs> I I just don't. All right, let's get into AEW because Dynasty happens this Sunday. It's been overshadowed to a degree because of WrestleMania, but WrestleMania has passed, and now it's time to get into some AEW. And like I said, this is, will be for Nerf Wall. Let us start with a trios match between Adam Copeland, Eddie Kingston, M Mark Briscoe versus the House of Black. I actually really like this. I actually really like this, and I'm 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 going to uh, I'm going to try to pull up the card here. Um, Why well, you want to look at the odds and have that affect no, how you I'm pick? Not, I'm not looking at the odds. I only did that because you asked me to during the uh, during the uh, WrestleMania. Yeah, that was WrestleMania, though. I mean, you know, I'm guessing like the Super Bowl. It's probably one of the more betted on uh, events for all of wrestling. Yes. Because more people are paying attention to it. But and if you want you can now. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I, I'm. You put uh, Steven Edge. wishes all the bad juju on you. I don't know what you did, but uh, you probably deserve it. You you don't put edge and Eddie together. Uh, and then you, you add in the, the, the feel good with Mark Briscoe. I really like house of black. I hope they stick around the, the, the assumption going on in the world of wrestling right now is that Malachi black, is going to end up back in, in WWE sooner rather than later. Uh, I'm going to go with Edge, Eddie, and Briscoe, brother number two. Me too. I don't want to, though, because House of Black has so much potential. Dude, they're awesome. And uh, they just don't know what to do with them. They're but awesome. It's not un they didn't know what to do with, with, with Black when he was in a WWE either, but that was a different uh, crew. Well, it's The you, new you, one might be able to do something with You it. end up with such a problem with these guys because they're, they're, they're meant to be a, a heel faction that you can genuinely dislike. And yet everybody loves everybody in that faction. Cause they're all really good. They're all really good. And, and they do unique things that, that other uh, wrestlers are not doing. All right. The next matchup is for the TBS championship. Julia Hart, speaking of house of black going up against Willow Nightingale. And it's a house rules match house rules match. Cause you know, the house always wins. That's yes. Julia Hart's intro song which sure. is a and killer also, intro every, song AEW loves them some 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 gambling stuff here um i'm gonna i'm gonna go julia hart retains i'm gonna go julia hart retains because at this point like they with with with, with for whatever reason Britt baker dr brick baker dmd friend of the show still being out uh julia hart is the face of that division at this point and talk about somebody who has grown tremendously over Agreed. the past couple of years Agreed. uh julia hart retains all right i'm gonna go with willow nightingale she's getting a, a major push uh she just got attacked last night so there's some outward things who knows how that's going to affect the match i'm gonna go with willow nightingale all right the next match is for the aew international championship roderick strong versus his old pal kyle o'reilly uh, is it weird that I don't care about this at all? Like, is that weird? I'm going to go Kyle O'Reilly here. Uh, I think Roddy, when he was doing his, his almost comedy program with Adam was given the opportunity to really make something out of himself. Really good wrestler two of 10 personality. And I think this is where it bites him. I'll take Kyle O'Reilly. All right. So I'm going to go Roderick strong here because I, I think they're going to try to, to string this out a little bit and, and actually do some storytelling and let it build a little bit more between he and Kyle O'Reilly, because not everybody knows that this is a story that's jumped from company to company and all that kind of stuff. All right. AEW continental championship. You got Okada versus Pac pack, whatever. This is probably going to be the best match on the entire card. Maybe. 
This match is to steal the word of my dear friend Joey B. Gonna slap, bro. This match is gonna go so hard. Okada's gonna hang on. That you've you've got too much wrapped up and invested in his growth over the years, and it's gonna stay that way. Okada wins. I agree. Gonna be a great match. Hopefully, Pac doesn't get hurt because he always seems to on yep. these type things because he sells out. AW Women's World Championship. Timeless Tony Storm versus Thunder Rosa. Uh, I like Thunder Rosa. Tony Storm might be the best thing going in women's wrestling, just as a whole. The character. Yeah, the watch ability, out for the shoe. The personality. Uh, chin up. You know what's out. Yeah, <laughs> don't say the next part. And watch out for the shoe. Tony Storm. All right, I'm also going with Tony Storm there. Although, uh, Thunder Rosa, they're trying to, I mean, she was already one of the most hated women there because of behind the scenes yeah. thing. Uh, th That's the other thing. I still think yeah. she's on the path to redemption in that company. Yeah. Uh, all right. The next match, just got a couple more AEW tag team championships. Uh, the, those championships were vacated when Sting retired. So they are up for grabs between literally uh, up for grabs. Yeah. The Young Bucks versus FTR. I'm going to go ahead and go first here. It's a ladder match. Uh, I'm going to go with the Young Bucks here because. Uh, FTR, if they climb the ladder, they're liars. So there's why, that. Why are they liars? Because they're not supposed to do that. They don't do that. Just fists. Dude, it's just different. fists. Yeah. It's, there's no way you're going up a ladder and not flipping, Rob. No way you're doing that. You got to flip off a ladder. Lonzo's list of things, you know, he always makes the jokes about Rob hates babies and old people and all that. Lonzo has his own uh, list of irrational hates, and FTR Colonel, is at the top of it. Colonel Grudge. Hello. Yeah, exactly. FTR is at the top of it. That being said, the Young Bucks are going to win. You got two, but again, another another group that, uh, as of right now, you have too much invested in your bigger storylines for them not to be the champs at this point. Young Bucks win. All right. Rarely is a, a world championship match overshadowed by another match, but it is. So we're going to go with world championship match first, although this is going to be a killer one. Samoa Joe versus Swerve Strickland. They've really built this up good. It's been a really good buildup, a lot of attacks backstage. Of course, uh, the verbal stuff has been good. Swerve handles his own on the mic. Uh, and then you got Nana weirdly dancing all over the place. So, um, yeah, Samoa Joe versus Swerve. You know what? I'm going to go Swerve. I, th I think they're going to put the belt on Swerve. Uh, as was once said uh, by a great wise uh, monkey, it is time. Swerve is a star. I knew Swerve was going to be a star when he was in NXT years ago. Swerve is a star. Joe is also a star, but Joe is a foundation guy, a guy that you have your next star beat because he is a monster. It is time to put the strap on Swerve. It might be overshadowed as a match. It is going to be the loudest pop of the night. Swerve Strickland is your new AEW world champion. And finally, Will Ospreay, the, the best wrestler in the world right now, going up against Brian Danielson, who at one point probably was the best wrestler in the world. This this should be a really good match, but I don't think it's going to be as good as Osprey versus Okada or against a couple of the other guys because Danielson has slowed down just a little. Uh, Hopefully he doesn't go to the point where he really hurts himself in this match, trying to get up to the level that Osprey is on. Maybe he remembers when he was at that level and he's not there anymore. I got to go with Osprey. That would matter more to me. If Daniel, if, sorry, if Brian Danielson wrestled like Pac, if he was jumping and flying and twisting and flipping, he's not. Daniel Bryan slash Brian Danielson is at his absolute best when it is a technical wrestling match. Will Ospreay is at his best when he is breathing. That dude is on that short list of guys that we use the expression that man could wrestle a mop and put on a five star match. Uh, this match is going to be the slappiest of slappiest fights on the card. I would listen as good as I, I, I think Okada and Pac's going to be as good as I think Swerve V Joe's going to be. I would pay just for Will Ospreay, Brian Danielson. Will Ospreay is him. He's the future. He is the future, uh, not of AEW. 
He's the future of wrestling. If AEW stays competitive for any length of time, it will be because of Will Ospreay. Will Ospreay wins that match because Brian Danielson understands putting the future over. I'm going perfect on this card. I'm perfect on this card. There's not a miss for your boy. Okay, we'll see. Back after this to wrap it all up on the Rob Brown Show in the Fan Up State. So we're doing this thing where where I fight to, to to keep us on the clock, and then you talk for like three minutes while the bed's going. Sorry, I went like thirty <laughs> seconds on over. this on this one, but earlier a uh, couple times. Let me help us, okay? Help me help you. Yeah, I'm not saying it's it's not going to be a great match because I'm not sure Osprey can do a bad match. Same thing with Danielson. Yep, I concur, Joey B, and it is going to be a, a banger. A banger. So now to help patients lose weight in the fastest and most effective way, QC Kinetics is excited to offer newly approved injectables for those who qualify. If your weight is keeping you from living your best life, call QC Kinetics now and learn more about these next-generation weight loss options, including semaglutide and drizepatide. Even if you're just looking to look better and feel better by getting back to your ideal weight, call the medical professional... forgot to mention who won WWE Speed yesterday. By the way, turns out the, the booker for that, the guy who's doing all that, is Pete Dunne. Really? Yeah, which makes sense. I mean, from a speed standpoint, the guy who's organizing the matches... Are these matches ending in pins and submissions? I don't know. Admittedly, I only watched like the first week. Yeah, exactly. I can't wait to see who the champion is, though. It might end up being Pete Dunn. Who I knows? Can't, I can't get on board. I can't. It's just a, it's an interesting concept. I think they would have been better served if they did it on a point system and didn't have guys out there eating pins in three minutes. Don't lose hope. You could do something like have well, you can't really use Gulak right now, but guys like him. Uh, apparently he has disappeared. So Yeah, because of what Because of the Ronda Rousey yeah. thing? Yeah. Uh, but you have guys like that. You know who I'd throw out there? Throw out Chad Gable. Uh, Look at what I just say, by the way. I would throw out three like known used to be amateur wrestlers and have them judge via point system. It's it's Oscar. Look at the look on her face. That's how I picture if you if if I ever visited uh, Diesel's house. I wonder if he still has a snake. Just the look on her it. face. Yep. I I don't think I would say yes. Um, I know you probably would, but I'd be like, no, I, your winner is Rick O'Shea. Would you be okay with someone putting a big old snake around your I neck? Used to have a snake okay. Me. Yeah. Just no, not me. Well, I didn't even say I have a roommate who had a snake and I loved it. Yeah. I'm, yeah, I'm passing on that one. I don't care how much money you're trying to pay me. No, thank you. I might die of heart failure. Oh, look, they're showing you guy, and you recorded that, and you never played that. You know what? Screw it. We're doing that. Let's say we'll have time since we're kind of on time. Although this hour, there is no traffic, but still, for consistency's sake. We'll go with the breaks were longer. I'm good with that. It can be proven or disproven, but that's what we're going with. 
Actually, that first break was pretty long, so. I have said for years that one of the most important things that you can do is to be honest with yourself, to look in the mirror, stare down that man or woman looking back at you and really let yourself have it. Okay. Don't beat yourself up. That's my job. But like, be honest in your critique of yourself and your abilities and your performance and figure out what your issues are and correct them. Now, I will also acknowledge that uh, 100% I beat myself up. 100% I walk out of here as Lonzo can tell you on many days. Then I go, that show sucked. I suck. Also known as when I say, Reitzel, what are you doing? Correct. Or in his case, Brown, come on. Yeah. If I drop the Rob and I just call myself Brown, I, I am mad at myself. That is harkening back to the old football coach days when they were going, Brown, what are you doing? Okay. You get it. Uh, there is a young man that is currently a pitcher for the Tampa Bay Rays. The Tampa Bay Rays are uh, not super great uh, at baseball right now. They are over 500, which is more than a lot of other teams can say. They are currently sitting on a 10 and 9 record. They have a pitcher by the name of Pete Fairbanks. Pete Fairbanks is having uh, a struggle of it right now. And his performance yesterday against the LA Angels of Anaheim, he earned his second L on the season. <laughs> Why, you ask? Well, he got the start. He went one inning, surrendered three hits, two earned runs, two walks, zero strikeouts, just 28 pitches thrown in a game ERA of nine. It is the second L that he has taken. After the game was over, Pete Fairbanks was approached by the media at the locker in post-game availability. And, um, well, uh, this happened. Was it just a matter of command, location, selection, anything specific? Uh, no, I thought it generally sucked. I didn't think it was a specific suck. I thought it was like an all-encompassing type of suck. So, you know, we're going to try and rectify that. But for right now, I'm going to be pretty pissed about it. Pete, where do you kind of go from here? Is it looking at tape? Is it going through mechanics? Where do you kind of go from here? You tell me. I've tried that. If you got an answer, I'd love to hear. Just, you know, not going to let it beat me up for... Uh, you know, I'll maybe give it till 10. It's 944 right now. We'll give it 16 minutes of of salt, and then we'll, you know, get back on the bump and, and figure it out. I love this guy. I love this guy. I love this guy because that's me. You know what? I'm going to be mad for 11 more minutes, and then i got to move on to the next thing. And most importantly, it sucked. It genuinely – no, generally sucked. No, I thought it generally sucked. I didn't think it was a specific suck. I thought it was like an all-encompassing type of suck. Welcome to your uh, welcome to your slot on the board. New soundbite. When your when your suck is specific, you yeah. you know the moment. Well, okay, that's the point where yeah. that really really sucks. I can fix specific suck, right? I can when one thing sucks, I can go I hammer down and fix this suck because this suck sucks and I don't want this suck to suck anymore. When you have a general suck where everything sucks, those are the days I kick the door to the studio and walk out of here going, damn it, Brown, why are you bad at this still? It's been 18 years. Figure it out, bud. And then those are the days that I got, I don't know how to fix this. I don't know how to fix this. It's a general suck that you get in trouble. And I respect old <laughs> PDF for looking at himself in the mirror and saying it generally sucked. Then you hear down the hall, Tara yelling, quiet down and get better. No, I thought it generally sucked. I didn't think it was a specific suck. I thought it was like an all-encompassing type of suck. I like it. I like it. They and enjoy, I get it. I enjoy the delivery, too. And if you watch the guy. He, oh, he's so mad. Yeah, he is not he's happy. He's so mad about it, dude. You can see it in the face. I love at the end of the clip when he's like, do you have an idea? I'm really open to it right now. I'll listen to anybody because, again, been there, done that, got that T-shirt. I, I, have, I have had those days where everything goes sideways and somebody goes, Rob Brown, seems like um, seems like everything sucks. And you go, yeah, yeah, this is crap. I hate it. 
you got any ideas? Cause I'm a, and even in that, in that moment, and I get it. Cause again, I've been there. He wasn't joking. Like he's genuinely asking, Hey, you're a baseball guy. You're covering the sport. Did you see anything I can fix? Because I suck and I don't know how to fix it. That, that, that clip. It, yeah. It's also pretty bad because that guy, if he can't figure it out, will not be where he is for very long. Well, again, I get it. Uh, he's in a, uh, a career field that the margin uh, of error is, is, is non-existent. Can he hit? I mean, he's a pitcher. No, he can't hit. Well, so can Otani's a pitcher. He can hit. That's why Otani is the greatest baseball player who's ever lived and not Pete Fairbanks. Sorry, Petey. For the record, I want you all to know, he's my new favorite baseball player that's not a Brave or Otani because my man just Rob Browned himself. I can't tell you how many days I have looked in the mirror and thought about my life. No, I thought it generally sucked. I didn't think it was a specific suck. I thought it was like an all-encompassing type of suck. I want it. It wasn't a specific suck t-shirt. I'd wear it. Yep. Yep, I'd wear it for sure. It wasn't a general suck, or it wasn't a specific type of suck. It was a general suck. The Rob Brown Show, it generally sucks. I like it. Not according like to the, the South tag. Carolina Broadcasters Association. According to them, it's the best show in the, in, in the state. <laughs> what a clip from PDF. What a clip from Pete Fairbanks, America's new favorite it, pitcher. You know, and it really it really seemed genuine because some of these guys, they know they're going to have, well, they all know they're going to have reporters in their face. And some of them, you know, kind of make this stuff up. I, You could tell that that came from the depths of his soul. It came from the darkest, darkest part. Unfortunately, we all know that place. Yeah. We've all been to that place. Yeah. Been there, done that. There game. might be a couple of people out there listening who have never, you know, experienced suck like that. Dude, if you have never looked at, you, at yourself in the mirror and said, it sucks, it generally sucks, it's not a specific kind of suck, good on you. I do it daily. Give me one X. What's your best X? Oh, I didn't even realize what time it was. Yeah. Uh, my best one is Red Lobster. Apparently, Red Lobster declared bankruptcy. Or about to. Yeah. It's about to. Yeah. I'm going to tell you right now, if the best thing you got going for you is a biscuit, I got plenty of little spots all around GVL that'll make you a good biscuit. Come on, come on Florida right. guy. Those biscuits are really – don't you yes. disparage the cheddar biscuits. No, they're amazing. That's what I'm saying. It's the best thing you got going, but the best thing you got going is a biscuit. And by the way, the, you can you can make them yourself. It's still not as good as going there and, Bro, they, and getting they them. They straight up sell the mix of it. Right, but, go buy but it. it doesn't taste as good as it does I'm at the actual place. I'm just saying, if the best you got to get me in your restaurant is, we got a biscuit, I got to tell you, there's a few mom and pop stores right there in my neighborhood in Taylor, South Carolina – it's got a pretty daggum good biscuit. Also, one more really quick. Hashtag earworm. No, I thought it generally sucked. I didn't think it was a specific suck. I thought it was like an all-encompassing. The time of, of my suck. life. I was going to do it if you did. It out to you. All right, we've had the time of our uh, Thursday. Tomorrow on the show, Andrew Lord, head coach of the Swamp Rabbits, Tyler Pollock, veteran captain of the Greenville Triumph, and some surprises because it, it's Friday. And no one will be put in the corner, we promise. Maybe. For Lonzo, I'm Rob. Have a great rest of your day. Don't drink a job. I'll punch you in the face. See you back here tomorrow to do it all over again, but better on the Rob Brown Show on the Fan Up State later. Yeah! Wow, I didn't even, I'm just looking at the clock going, I was supposed to do something here. Yeah. I know, I know. I'm supposed yeah, it's to all good. do something here. What, what was this supposed to do? This is The sound bite had me so much that I just, yeah, I'm just go with that. Because I'm, I'm seeing the guy's face. Every time you play the cut, just the absolute look of, oh, man, I'm horrible. <laughs> it's a general suck. It's not a specific suck. All right, dudes and dudettes, I'm up out of here. Thank you guys for being here. Go, go to Red Lobster. Don't let Rob win. They, they do have good seafood also. Listen to me. Maybe not Florida seafood. Listen to me. I want you to go to a place that sells fresh seafood. They exist. 
There's one in Cherry. Was it called Cherrydale? Really? How, how do you sell fresh seafood in a place that's not that close to the they sea? They ship it overnight, refrigerated, not frozen. Which means it's not fresh. It's 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 by the freshest seafood that one can get your hands on. There it is. Okay? Not where it's been in a Red Lobster freezer for days. Fats is out of business time. too, Stephen. At least, well, in around here they are. Go get yourself some good. Here, I'll there's one in Clinton. Go get yourself a big old fat fillet, a fresh Gulf of Mexico grouper. I want you to take it home. I want you to pat it dry. I want you to hit it with a touch of lemon pepper just across the top. Then I want you to take your cast iron skillet. I want you to get it real, real nice and hot. I want you to season it up with just a little bit of oil. All right. You wait till that oil starts to glimmer. You don't want it to burn, but you want it to have a little shimmer across the top. I want you to drop that in there. I want you to wait until you see that fish start to move. It's gonna curl up and shrink a little bit. As soon as you see that fish start to move, I want you to flip it over immediately. Okay? Wait a minute, is the fish dead? Yes. Okay, well, I mean, yes. you were you said it was moving. It the, 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 the meat starts to contract a little bit. It will, if you pull it up early, it's gonna stay stuck to the pan and then you got it, you got gross. Once that meat starts to shrink up a little bit and starts to move inwards, that means it's going to be disconnected from the pan. I want you to get you a flat spatula. I want you to flip it over. I want you to let the other side cook as well. Let that cook. I want you to throw it over the top of a bed of garlic butter mashed taters and have that for dinner. And I want you to call me tomorrow and go, gosh darn it, Rob, you're very good at this. And I will say, I know. I know. I know. For the record, how many of you have ever gotten a lobster at Red Lobster? I, I don't think I've ever seen anybody get a lobster. I have. At and Red I've, lobster. I've seen other people there do the same thing. But yeah. also, I'm from Ohio and we're landlocked. I don't think if you knew that, unless you count lakes, which I don't. So, you know, there's that. So it's people like me who didn't grow up anywhere near the ocean who that's the only way they're able to get something ocean wise. You know, whatever. I don't think there's anything that I'm elitist on food wise. I'm trying to think about that. that I go, no, 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 you're doing it wrong. There should be. Why? Why does there have to be? Like steak that's done over medium rare with ketchup should be banned. Yeah. I, I am not going to, you're, you're American. I, again, as long as you're not having sex with it, I'm not going to judge how you eat your food. All right, y'all, I'm out of here. Y'all have a lovely rest of your day. I'm leaving because uh, James just said, or Stephen just said shrinkage, and that's my cue. Have a great day. Goodbye.